Bradley? It's an act. I was going to wear it in. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, it's not a private road. It's a so trustee road. You you okay. It's not. Okay. Because it goes over state land. Okay. 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 Right. And then this is all the information. I think we're making progress. Every school. I don't know. You've been up on where they're doing the replantings and stuff. I'm not. <laughs> so I know that was something I wanted me to get. All right. Um, I got these the other day from the building. Great. I will start to look through it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and if you have any questions on any of this. Okay. Let me know. Okay. Yeah, we should roll the positive. We have to Oh my god, wow. Hi Chris. Yeah. 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 Pretty Here, why don't we hand them around? Just give me the whole pile and we'll pass them around. Just got your email. Who decided on Mondays for this thing? <laughs> Mike. May I interrupt you just one second? Yeah. Just one second. Are we going to announce yeah. the glory? That's yeah. nice. The, the kayak thing? <laughs> right, right. Okay, we're on. Can uh, please stand for the pledge? To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. John, can, can you reach that for me? Thanks. All right, we'll start with public comment. Uh, Scott DeBryan. Good evening. My name is Scott DeBryaner. I work at InterScience Research Associates in Southampton. My formal title is Senior Environmental, Senior Environmental Planner and Landscape Architect. I'm here to represent uh, LWJ, it's an application um, I've been before you in the past. I don't want to waste your time, I don't think there's any need for me to represent the proposal. I'll answer uh, your questions if you have any, um, and we'll take it from there. Last time you were in, were we weighing on any other boards or agencies to weigh in on this? Mm -hmm. I believe John actually wanted to talk to Brian Frank, um, and I believe that happened. Uh, yeah, I spoke to Brian, and uh, he looked at the application and agreed it was pretty much as he had discussed with Scott uh, prior to Scott making an application. So I'm prepared to offer a resolution to grant the permit tonight. I don't know if you want to do this now or in order. No, I mean, you know, it's here, let's, let's take care of it. Right. So, uh, what was the resolution to grant the permit for this? Remove 289 linear feet of existing failing bulkhead, construction of 25 feet of a bulkhead return at the northern end of the proposed bulkhead to remain. Remove dead, fallen vegetation and debris from the face of the bluff. Cut flag vegetation at grade, overhanging grass at the ledge on top. And place and grade clean sand landward of the proposed bulkhead return and bulkhead to remain and revegetate the bulk the bluff face. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm gonna recuse myself. Okay. Um, I just wanna express my thanks to you guys. I go before many boards on a regular basis. The amount of communication between yourself and the applicant is really way above par. Um, uh, and I'm not saying this simply because we just got a resolution <laughs> approval. I think I alluded to it in the past as well. Thank you. Well, Thank thanks. you. I received your comments, uh, I think the day after I got my application in, which was really unheard of. So, thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. It should be nice and streamlined when it's ready. Mm -hmm. right. You will. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Bruce Harwood. <coughs> Bragmites. Are you in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
favor of them? I'm in favor. Are we going to vote on whether we like them or not? Uh, Bruce Horwath representing uh, six different properties, three in Lion's Head Beach Association and uh, three in Georgica Association that all are Phragmites control using similar methodology, which is hand cutting and removing the uh, material after it's cut, doing that on a three to four times a year basis, leaving all remaining native vegetation in place. And I think the trustees have been out, have been out to both sites with different groups. One of the issues that had come up at the uh, Georgia Association for one, for three Eel Cove on the Rifkin property had to do with the fact that they also have an application in to replace uh, coir logs. And um, what we're going to do, if the, so if, uh, what I'd like to propose at least is that we separate out the Phragmites control portion from the, uh, the restoration of the coir logs because there's still uh, uncertainty about how they want to approach that. And, at this point, the pond is so high that nothing's going to be done until the fall. And so what they'd like to do is some time to work with Jim. We had already proposed a, a one plan that they're reacting to now, and then we can get back and do some more ideas on that and some back and forth on it, but deal with the Phragmites separately, if that's okay. And that would take place before the fall? The uh, Phragmites? The Phragmites, yeah, that would be starting as soon as all the permits are in place, which you know hopefully would be fairly soon. So you're waiting for permits from other agencies? Waiting for permits from both DEC and town in both cases. And you're proposing uh, to, to get approval tonight from our board? I would like to, unless there's additional questions or a need for more information. Otherwise, yes, I'd like to. Brian, did you have anything from our visit to Eel Cove? No, I think it was pretty straightforward, and I had been there twice with Jim and Bruce. So I'm in favor, uh, without objection. I'd, I'd like, I'll make a motion. And I'll to, second it. To, to approve this condition, conditional okay. on them getting the other permits. All right. And no. any, if there's any yeah. modifications that DEC makes that you'll come back to us. Mm -hmm. Yep, with sounds those, good, thanks. With those. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this includes both Lion's Head and Susan, Rick, and I went to see you at the uh, Lion's Head, and I thought it was very well documented and explained, and the same methodology being used in Georgia Capon, so I thought it was a, a good plan. Bruce, there were some, um, at least on one of the properties, they were going to do a restoration of some of the upland areas. Yeah, there's scenic Upper easements seating. on two properties, and right. in both cases, those ha they've been encroached on over the years. And so I have, I'll bring copies over to the trustee office. I have uh, reveg plans um, for both properties. Okay. I actually have one for the. Uh, for the Geelan property, but it's yeah. being the one for the Shapiro property is being done by somebody else. Right. But I'll get copies both of Right, because then when we do our, our late fall review of the properties, we could look at how that's progressing, I suppose, right. as well. Right. So it'd be a Thanks. nice review opportunity to see how the whole project on Pond and on Upland is kind of working together. Okay. Susan, did you have any questions from our visit? No, I don't think so. Yeah, it was just that one. It was what, Six Bay Inlet and the one next door? And the one next door had the... Right. And then the one at the end that we walked. That yeah, the one at the opposite side of the pond is the association. <laughs> That's, yeah, that was the yeah. association. Geelin is the one with yeah. the wetland restoration. Yeah. All right, and then... Geelin and Shapiro adjoin one another. Right. And they both have, have restoration. restoration. Yeah. And then at the association, there's no upland uh, considerations or... Well, parking. that nothing's been done to that upland. That's basically yeah. due now to Gardner's Bay. Right. That's in its natural right. state and yeah. standing. Yeah, there was no <coughs> no issues there. Yeah, there was no clearance clearing there. It was just on those two the two neighboring eight. properties. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so uh, I'd like to make a motion that we um, pass for right. the um, three properties with the contingencies that you've mentioned, Rick. With the vegetation plans. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. So Susan will favor. second it. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Where were those properties? Uh, they were they a Creek? small pond next to Hog Creek. Yeah. Bay Lane. Yeah. And, 
the last scene that you. Did they get pulled on the agenda? No, Shapiro. Isle of Wight. Bay and Light. Bay and Light. It's on Akamon Concrete. We have Lionhead, Shapiro, Shapiro. and Gielan. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Under committee reports. Yeah. Lionhead, is. Shapiro, okay. Gielan. Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, next on public comment, Daryl Glennon. Good evening, uh, Daryl Glennon. Um, I'm here to try to give some insight towards an area that I'm most familiar with. And in the past and all like that, um, in general, I'm not too fond of public uh, or the government situation at this point, especially East Hampton's government. But that being said, I'm still here to just voice not as much of as an opinion, but as possibly some facts or grant some knowledge of my years down on Lazy Point. And what I brought <coughs> with me, um, this is for if you guys want to hear. If you don't, you know, just like Stuart Vorpal, when he's gone, that knowledge is gone with him, okay? I'm not at his level. That man was amazing. Okay, I worked for him uh, at one point in time with the dredge. Um, I'm just going to start off with the harbor is in terrible disrepair. And it was started in 87 with the first dredging of the wrong inlet. So it was, it was created. The disrepair was created by us. I don't know who actually had the full knowledge of it, if it was trustees or not. And the whole thing is you can't take offense because you aren't here doing it at the time. But uh, I do know Larry Penny had a hand in it. I believe the name, is it Rick, is it Rick Hamilton who was the DEC officer at the time? Chuck. Chuck, 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 Chuck Hamilton, okay. And I had personal conversations with him after I had done some of the uh, shoring up at the end of Mulford Lane. And he revealed a few things to me that, oh, and because I started talking to him about Nephi Carver, he says, Anytime you have a, 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 a two inlets in a harbor, you always have a minor inlet and a major inlet. So he already knew this, and he shouldn't even have let the project go on, because apparently ever since the dredging and the other inlet closing up, you closed up the major inlet that was responsible for feeding that harbor. And... Uh, Really, I'm jumping around. Let me uh, see if I can go back to this for a second. Uh, some short notes, okay. Um, when I was 13, living on the house that's in the water off of Mulford Lane, my parents owned that. They owned it 70, 71, 72. At 71, I started working for Roddy Brandt at the Promise Land Fishing Station. Uh, I filled in for a guy, uh, Billy Kalbacker who, uh, because I was only 13 at the time, but I filled in a few weekends, and then after that, it was my job full-time, uh, all, all weekends and stuff when we came out in the spring. So I saw a lot. I was on the water strongly at an early age, okay, as most people were here or with their parents, okay. Um, I end up, I uh, do have, during the 70s, and the early 80s, but mostly the 70s, when everybody was scalloping with dredges, I was uh, skin diving. Okay, I was picking up my bounty by uh, snorkeling and actually skin diving by going down for them. And I saw how the bottom was torn up from scalloping and stuff like that. So I saw different things. Uh, I am in a, um, an assistant instructor for Patty Scuba at this point. I had a captain's license. I, I held my captain's license for uh, uh, 10 years or so, um, and I've just seen changes, but I've also seen them physically and visually by what I do, okay? Um, anyways, what I brought here for you, okay, one thing to start off with, one chart, that these are all around, you can get them, okay? Ends up the date on this is 84. But the uh, biggest part about it 
a lot of it isn't as accurate as it may seem. And you know what? You can just fold it and whatever. But if you take a look, okay, basically at Nepeague Harbor, and it shows you the deep water and where it went. Daryl, can you hold that up? This way is maybe well, the, camera. Side. the camera might see it this from this well, direction. John holds one side of <laughs> This one actually, uh -huh. that is uh, 84. Hold one side of it, John. I didn't even look at the date on this one. This one is pretty inaccurate for the coloring. It's obvious where the deep water was. The artist barge, you had to go to the deep water to get the artist barge where it is now. Okay, and you know, people might talk about, oh, it's great for oysters, but um, it's not great for everything that used to happen there. And I know that the demise of the eelgrass came in the 70s and the 80s when everybody, uh, I'm gonna leave that if anybody wants to take it. If you don't want me to leave it, I will. And I don't know if the eelgrass ever came back, okay? And- There's some along the eastern shoreline of the harbor. It was all full, they are all over yeah. at one point no, there's just time. One, one section over, you know. Right, and the thing is, is the Partly fact that a, when, uh, with Audie Brandt mentioning him, he had a BS in uh, biology, and uh, he used to like to talk about his, the BS ring he got. But anyways, the idea was he identified a lot of the fish when we were early uh, dragging one dredge along as homeowners and just trying to uh, get a few scallops. And we'd get, uh, you'd be surprised, we got uh, the weak fish, the black fish. Um, he pointed out a, a special, a, a few different species, and we're talking all um, an inch, two inches large. Okay, in the eelgrass growing. Uh, harbors or nurseries, okay? Uh, what I wanna go to though is besides the harbor being a nursery, you have the pond of pines which is not illustrated as well on these maps and it is in terrible, terrible disrepair and sometimes dredging is not a dirty word. And the idea about the pond of pines uh, the, with the eels, Okay, that's one species. We used to go through there for our, for our crabbing all the time. And at one point in time, I had a pair of waders on walking through there and it was a sea of eels. They were just coming through like crazy. Um, I'm skipping around a lot as far as just trying to hit on things. The thing I also have here is I was up in Maine and I brought one of their papers back. And what they're talking about on one article is their elvers. Okay, as far as the young eels. And what a dynamic resource it is because of the demand for them. And they're trying to say, why don't we grow them out ourselves and get the market price? They are selling the elvers to like China and stuff and it's a very good market price. One of the specialties of that area in the day, in the 70s, I went mud spearing on the ice in December in that pond, okay, when we had it frozen over where you could walk and use your mud spear. So the thing is, is it's a tremendous valuable asset that I don't really want to take part of it, but basically we ruined it. The first dredging should have sh shown you signs of what went wrong, but they went ahead, and I, I will name names, I don't care, you know, like, uh, Penny was no good at it. That wasn't his forte, but he wanted to step in. And he should have had nothing to do with it because he had nothing to do with water. Okay, so Larry Penny did not help the situation. Um, like I said, Chuck Hamilton, knowing better, did not help the situation. He, he should be held responsible too, but both of them are, are done and out. They took their, their paycheck and left. So we're still left with the problem and the issue. Do you want this harbor to come back or not? Okay, I don't care how many, I mean, I could do it in a bucket of water if you wanna, that's too much as far as, if you're just trying to grow oysters, it's not hard. Okay, I, I give everything to whoever is doing it and how much they are doing it. Um, back to what I was getting at, is I had, uh, without going into it, I had asked a few people down 
to take a look at the tides we had in February and things that were exposed that you could see exactly what I was saying. So your eye could go and see, you see what I'm getting at? This isn't right, this ain't the way it used to be. This is detrimental, okay? But the whole thing is, there was other business at hand, we never made the contacts, and those really, really low tides in about February, uh, that's what will show you a lot. Some of the low tides today will still show you a lot. Uh, with that though, um, for Francis, your brother, Rick? As a trustee? Tim. No, no, no. My brother, Rick, yeah. Yes, he did a wonderful, he uh, sent up a, um, a drone, a drone mm -hmm. and my wife was showing me what he did on a drone flying over at Kabonik. I put a call into him, I didn't get an answer or anything like that. He's a gentleman that would be very good on capturing to let everybody see if he would take the drone up in places and fly that over and do the filming that I saw him do on Acapotic, that tells a lot. A picture is a thousand words, okay? Um, where I'm going with all this is I am going to go to, uh, there's things I skipped over. It ain't worth it as long as I skipped over it, okay? Uh, one of the things I, I do realize though is the paper from a couple of weeks ago that you pointed out about Hicks Island. And with that is they feel that whose is it? Get to the point though, there's a land bridge and apparently piping plovers might have been killed by Fox from one gentleman's explanation. If that's so, that's so. Why was there a land bridge there? There should never have been a land bridge. So you had a protected species that was also wiped out from that area, okay? Um, so also with this, if anybody's interested, because also the main paper and everything with the Elvers, very interesting. Check it out if you want to. Let's go to what you're really concerned about, deep water. Deep water, deep pockets. Okay, tap into it. You know, the, t the town is going, what can we do with that money? Why don't you guys step up and say, no, half of it's ours. Okay, and uh, why don't we look at Nat Pig in a real serious sit time. You've, you've basically, it, just, it was destroyed even before 30 years, it's 30 years now. It was destroyed in 20, okay? Um, the, not only that is all the information about that and when it was dredged and everything, I saw that previously when Nat Pig was brought up to the forefront back at the end of Larry Penny's regime, but you guys did have um, paperwork to show you when the dredging did happen back in the 60s, and that's when the harbor was totally beautiful and working very well. Uh, one other thing I wanted to throw in there before I go back to deep water is that I do recall one time also, do you guys know about when uh, 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 Bob Valenti, Dr. Valenti, when you hired him for the flounder? Does anybody know about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then DEC with the infinite wisdom says, no, we don't want an invasive species in there or we don't know where you got where you got the fish from. And he got it from locally sourced fishermen who brought in the row and uh, the, uh, the mail for the uh, fertilization. So, but then they wouldn't let him release it. So the point is you had, you tried, there are things going on. If you have a different DEC at this point right now, if you have this deep water currently now, uh, this harbor really could use your help. And the fact that myself, I don't know how long I'll, I'll, I'll be here, okay? But it's up to you or this body to decide on what about the future generations? What's there now? And the whole thing is that Peak Harbor's always been a second class citizen in this town. Look at that launching ramp. What kind of BS is that? You know, every other launching ramp is beautiful. But you know what? It's wrong and it can't be beautiful because it's not even the right inlet. Okay? Like with Susan's father. When I went fishing with him, 26 ton barge, we took out the other inlet all the time. By the way, in my diving experiences, that inlet went to from 14 feet. When I dove it one year on September 14th, Okay, because I'll admit right now I took a flounder and I didn't realize the season didn't open until the 15th. And I was in there diving and I was looking at the bass and everything else like that, picked up a flounder, and two years later it was less than six feet. 
two years later, it was less than six feet, okay? And the whole thing is the, the deep water doesn't match up. Larry Penny at the end told me, oh yeah, you know, what I was told just recently is that the eelgrass really does like the cold water. We always knew that the west inlet was the bathtub water, the uh, east or north inlet was always the, the cold water, opening up to the deep. It allowed the fish in. It, it allowed you horseshoe crabs that you want to count and everything. Now, how, do, how does a horseshoe crab know we can't go that way no more? There was so much, and that harbor needs help, and I see blue water at a, at a point where, you know what? If they're offering it, take it. But make sure you get your piece of the pie and start thinking about that pig. The other thing I have here too, I don't think this would make any difference. This was for something else. It, it, all it was, it was an aerial from back in the day on uh, Shore Drive East. And mostly I got it because of uh, people's bulkheads and stuff like that. And the idea was, is like my mother's house and father's house is down there. And I, if anybody ever wants to, uh, I can kind of point out which one that is, uh, because it's hard to tell where the bulkheads are. Actually, they're, they're over here. And it's even hard to tell there's a bulkhead here. But now, every day the water's up to the bulkhead. And some of the things that I see, uh, another thing Larry Payne didn't realize is, uh, and I'm saying because these are conversations I had with the man, okay? It's not a continual knock. When he thought about the doing the dredging and everything else he was thoughting, thinking about for the harbor, he never considered west along Shore Road. The erosion down there is phenomenal. I kept my boat in the water in the early 2000s and there was a three to five knot current. In the 70s and the 80s, there was no current in front of Mulford Lane. We had the boats out there all the time. In 2000, my zincs were getting knocked off. Things changed from that whole area and around to the factory. Some of it was gonna happen anyways. But the dredging exasperated it and nobody looked at that. And in my mind, what you can see with a lot of that harbor, it's showing up. And yet, where's it coming from? If I show you how I used to walk down the beach <coughs> this way, and now the beach is way over here. Okay, there's certain things down there that, you know, if you ever want to look at it, because it is still a paradise, it is still pristine, but it's just messed up. And I don't think you're gonna ever be able to get a nursery. Like I said, the, the pond is a nursery within a nursery. And even that dredging, I think, can be done, it, it, it's a certain way that it can be done. And not only that, because it's, it's edged itself out so close to Crasson Boulevard going down there, that why not put it back where it belongs to there and cut it a certain way? The only problem is, is when you also go down to the harbor, it's not what used to be there. There used to be a nice little gut for a short area in between the Otis Barge. It was closer to the Otis Barge and where Shore Drive East is. There was a gut out there where at low tide it stayed at six feet. Okay, but you don't have that. That helped get into the Pond of Pines. Okay, now all of a sudden in that peak harbor, there's no way to get a, a dredge to mysteriously uh, appear. But sooner or later, you know, it's not really a bad word. I mean, they dredged the other part, and like I said, I, a couple times, like even right by, by the uh, launching ramp, I was able to go down, and with a few, about mm, four or five times down, I'd have a bushel of blue mussels right next to the launch ramp. I knew they were down there. You had to get down there about eight to 10 feet, about eight feet, come up with clusters of blue mussel. Went, went over and had the beach part. But at the same time also, then they dredged, and there's so many times where the, the sands or what they do in the tides, they cover up new shellfish, and then they're, they're killed, they're dead. Anyways, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Are uh, you interested in this? You can have this too, as far as uh, you'd have Anything to Anything you want to sure. leave, we'll be interested. Yeah, uh, just because. Thank you. And like I said, like, uh, deep water sounds like deep pockets. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. It's very interesting.
I'd just like to say uh, I'm pretty familiar with NAPEG. I spent 20 years there every summer working on the shellfish hatcheries nursery site. And I have to agree with a lot of what Daryl just said. The first dredging that was done in the late 80s uh, specifically eliminated dredging the East Channel. And the reason was that uh, there were complaints that the East Channel was being used more and more as a stopover for large yachts that were coming in to anchor at Skunk's there Hole. There was nothing in there that was ever that large. I remember well, the yachts, these pretty big 30 foot boat. That was about yeah, as big as maybe, ever got yeah, in there. All right. 30 foot, 30, 35 foot boats. Yeah. But that was the reason that that East Inlet wasn't dredged at the time, and only the West Inlet was dredged. And then, uh, he's right, it did start shoaling up. I mean, it had been shoaling up, I have to say, that had been shoaling up for many years. The, if you look at the really old maps from the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey, Gough Point continually moved towards the west. Clo that inlet used to be extremely wide, all the way from Hicks Island to uh, you know where the the, uh, the dunes are on the western side of uh, that spit that's between Hicks Island and uh, the state park. And gradually it was closing, but it was really did close up quickly after the inlet was dredged in the late 80s, and then again, whenever the next dredging took place in the early 2000s, or? 2013. Well, I don't think they, ever, don't think they dredged that north or east inlet. No, they after didn't. After 87. No, that's, the, that's my yeah. point. And you know, there's something that they I think have. gets forgotten. First off, as far as water temperature and viability of, of eelgrass, they run hand in hand. Where do we still have viable beds of eelgrass? We have them at Rocky Point in Montauk. It's on the bay side, the water's cool, it's oxygenated, it's appropriate for the species. But you know, Daryl's right in the respect that all of these harbors, Napeague Harbor, Hawk Lake Creek. Montauk, Hog Creek, these things, I don't know when it was, it had to have been before I remember but there was a channel dug around the perimeter of all of these harbors. And you know, in Montauk, that was a freshwater lake when Carl Fisher cut, cut the inlet in there. But as a kid, you couldn't swim in Lake Montauk because the eelgrass would bog you down so bad. The same situation occurred in Lays in Napeague uh, with the eelgrass. And you know, what's happened over the years, I think we all grew up about the same time, and we grew up in that period where the eelgrass thrived when the, the channels were fairly new, the cool water was getting in there, it was getting sustained by the cool water, by the nutrients that were washing in there, and we're all standing here watching this thing gradually deteriorate, and you know, a lot of times in nature, a little disaster goes a long way to fix things. And I think you, I think for Napeague, certainly for Blake Monto, you need that disaster in the form of a dredging event to allow the cool water to come in to rejuvenate these places. And you know, I agree. I, I think it, it really is something that definitely needs to be done because we stand here at every other meeting and we lament what used to be there. Well, what used to be there, for the most part, I wish you could, I could say it was natural, but what used to be there in a lot of cases was the product of human activity. Yeah, okay. I'd just like to point out another little irony about that, Jim, and that after Mr. Richardson spoke at the last meeting about Hicks Island, I went and did a little research in the trustee files. It turns out that the trustees sold Hicks Island to a private mm -hmm. person for uh, the purposes of setting up a Menhaden processing yeah, plant. Yeah, there used to be the remains of that old plant. And there was there. a controversy in the 30s where the trustees wanted to dredge the, the on the west side of Hicks Island, there was a, a little beach that washed over at high tide, and they wanted to dredge it. And the owner of the island was upset 
because his claim was if you dredge the west side, mm -hmm. the east side will close up. So this yeah. is nothing new. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I mean well, that every that, dredging that's that, been done that, has caused another problem. That so that plant at Hicks Island used to get its fresh water from Fresh Pond. There's a pipe that runs all the way from Napeague Meadow, right. you know, or the the the, the, the uh, by Goff Point there. There used to be old sections. Every once in a while, you'll see them get opened up. There's old sections of old corduroy road where, you know, they laid the logs down in the dirt. But there was a pipe that ran all the way to Fresh Pond that they got their water out of there for that. Mm -hmm. and you know, the uh, east channel or former east channel is not so much unlike the culvert in Akabonic Harbor, which is very prone to shoaling and closing up but maybe as an interim step to improve water quality and get cool, fresh water in from Block Island Sound, maybe we should consider an environmental seasonal dredging project in Napeague Harbor. Trying to close that west channel, deal with the launching rep, it, it may be beyond our reach in the short term, <coughs> but if you do want to improve water quality and lower the mean water temperature, maybe opening up that east channel every spring well, well the you, problem you is the outer the part of the channel is built in also. Of there right now it's a five million dollar project. Pretty significant. Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's well, that Francis, huge a span. I don't know. I walked across Francis, today. I was Francis kind of is right. That how big the bay it is. side is shoaling in significantly. Once the channel closed. There was nothing to flush sand out. Well, there's a great the sandbar out there for surfing and hurricanes, I know, but so it's. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, it I mean, my my feeling right is right anything that we do should be preceded by st some study by somebody who knows what they're talking about. We need a hydrology study, probably, to really. Yeah. According to uh, Richard Lester. Um, Captain Lester, uh, he told me that back, he can remember as a young man, there was another opening there called Browns. I've heard that. Uh, on the uh, east side. And uh, that was very effective, but it would close by itself. And, yeah. but. Um, yeah, I think there's remnants of that still there. Yeah. And it's actually the road that you're taking in on the back side. I think it was called Browns, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a, part of the problem with that East Channel is it, opening it with a, um, a long-reach excavator became acceptable. And, you know, it would clear it up for a little while, close up again, and that allowed the outer part to fill in. Right. Well, just a thought, you know, if yeah. you wanted to try, you know, something not unlike the Colbert project. It sounds like a study that John is talking about first to see if from an expert would be the appropriate thing to do, but it sounds like, as I'm listening, that they're all different ways of doing this, but they're all man-made, um, and eventually one problem creates another problem. Is is there a definitive way, or is the, every body of water is Clo different? Close the West Channel. Some equal Close the West Channel. Impact. There was a Peconic Estuary Program study proposed, actually, by Norman Edwards, and I think it might still be active. I'll look into that. With, uh, I, I, the, the, yeah. the county, the sense I get is they foot the bill, they determine which. And they'll only, they'll only, which yeah, one we've will, been told that they'll only support opening one channel. Right. And, and even though, weeks, even yeah. though we weighed in verbally that our, you know, uh, we felt it would be better if they opened up the east, as did many of the fishermen, they went ahead and did the uh, west, so they don't listen. Why did well, they I, choose the west? I think that it's west, cheap, to the east. That west cheaper, oh, shorter cheap. to the ramp, it's shorter to the public it's ramp for navigational it's purposes. Well, it's, it's navigational it's dredging, dredging to a public resource. A but I don't, yeah, I don't even remember a dialogue. We route the, the direction of the channel because the, the, the shoreline to the south of the inlet was being eroded so badly. So the, 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 uh, the proposal and what actually happened was <coughs> the dredging went straight in and then made a hard left. And the theory was that the water would flow to the left to the north. and mm -hmm. stay away from the southern shoreline. Not so much. And I think that shoreline's didn't. somewhat stabilized now. I don't think it's eroding as quickly as it was 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago. I know the end of that uh, ramp 
is wicked fast when the tide's going in and out. It's not usable. Yeah, dangerously so. And, and as I've heard pointed out at these meetings, the, you know, there was a proposal to relocate that launching ramp, but the fishermen that are working there now are speaking against that because they're afraid that that's just going to create another, another shoaling and, ed and uh, erosion, erosion. Mm. Yeah, scouring problem. Well, the, the only answer that really has come to light is to close the west inlet. So the ramp is now protected. That's a, that's a huge undertaking. And then open the east inlet. The water's coming. At this, at this point, it's so deep and so big, I don't even know if it's possible to do it. That's well, the challenge. Well, do it, but I think the, thing, the, the real answer may be to open and maintain the east channel. And, you know, like has been said, you end up with a dominant channel. And if the west one begins to shoal in, you allow that to occur to, some, right. to a certain extent. Maybe that's a long-term play. <laughs> Sorry, but the, uh, there's a lot of easier ways of doing what you're trying to go for. Is one gentleman told me at the end of Mulford Lane that uh, he was from Australia. I uh, can't remember his name on the top of my head. And I did work on the property there, shoring up underneath that last house before that one goes in the water. But he said sometimes what they did also is they, uh, in Australia, they would uh, lay out temporary bulkheads, figure out your angle or whatever like that, put in some bulkheads. But the idea is, is they were meant to come out. When you're done with them, pull them out. To create shoaling in that west channel? Well, you can create shoaling or the fact that, you, like along the beach, you can create buildup. And once you achieved your buildup, okay, so the whole thing is, and this doesn't mean the fact that you run a, a, a hundred, you know, you might only go 30 feet, you know, and 30 feet. And by a couple of these things, you, it, it, it's basically like, I believe, uh, was it your sand ladder or whatever it's like, like that? snow fence. Yeah, like. Well, but like the idea is, but this is, you know, to, to, to trap. You, you're going to do it a certain way to trap the, the flow of the sand. Now, in the meantime, also, is, is like you have the lighthouse being the revetment going on there. Um, you have basically one of those problems down at Lazy Point, also, which is out of your control, but at the same time, your input should be there. Is I'm sorry that it's Harold McMahon's, but what used to be the fishing station, um, that was a boat basin. And now it's only a groin. Okay, and that groin, uh, without having the rest of the feature there, makes a big difference also to that beach and everything. But not only that is, is sometimes maybe that rock groin should be pulled back in. Or the other thing too is, if you wanted to close up that inlet, you'd actually be using five ton plus boulders. Or you'd be using something like the lighthouse does. Things, you see, the thing that I've seen before is like even in, in um, Montauk Harbor is, when they dredged Montauk Harbor, all of a sudden they used uh, what every place else is called the spoil for beach, beach nourishment. And the whole point is it had to be because that's also Homeland Security with the Coast Guard. So all of a sudden it's beach nourishment, whereas when you take it out of a perfectly clean harbor like Napig, oh, it's spoil, which makes it sound like it's awful. So, but the point is, then you go to the lighthouse, and they have no problem doing a revetment with the rocks. So if you had to take baskets of rocks and put them together and put them in the water, you could slow that down. You have to do it at the same time where you open up the other one. There was already, I believe, with the trustees, I'm not positive where it was, Diane McNally should probably know, because I know she was available at the time, they had a proposal for how you would fix the harbor. And it was about shutting this down and opening this up. But it was with the realization that unfortunately, once you get outside the harbor, the shoaling effects on the outside of the harbor are very dramatic right now too. Where everybody used to have their favorite spot for striped bass and everything else like that, apparently that whole area is a heavy shoal. So the whole thing is it's, it's a lot more comprehensive to be gripped, but you see, today, we should consider that stuff material. Put it back where it belongs. Put it back on the beach, put it back on Hex Island, put it, put it anywhere. It, it's perfectly clean, okay? And then that way you can get a channel back out because the bell buoy is not that far away and that's where you're gonna get your good flow from and your larger fish, okay? Back in the day, down by the Promised Land uh, uh, the fish factory, 
when I set pots and everything else like that, we, I had gotten a three and a half foot, um, eight pound conger eel, all right? The factory was still attracting things in, but we also had deep water, all right? So even the things had changed. When, when the harbor, they used to show, if you look at the charts where it used to come in, the factory was relevant. It's not relevant anymore. It's only you coming through this way and you swing up to Akabonic and you, and you go up to Three Mile Harbor. It's not relevant. And a lot of that time, there's uh, a sandbar, uh, there's some um, rips there that I think at high tide, you're only pushing maybe 12 foot of water at this point. So there's a disconnect. There was a small disconnect in the day on the charts, but there's a bigger disconnect now from the, the inlet that used to go from the deep water right at the, well, there was a heavy shoal right at the end of, uh, off of Mulford Lane and out that way and it came from Cherry Point. Things changed partially because of the harbor, but where, the, the, where the, the deep water used to go and go around and end up at Smith Mill there, Promised Land, it, it was amazing what came in that way. And there is still some deep water there. It's just not as functional as it used to be, okay? But the idea is anything, they're all connected. And when you do studies or anything else like that, is like whatever you can do to slow down. I mean, that, that's the whole point is the ramp doesn't make much of a sense. Things I did here is it was people in the southeast corner that didn't want the sailboats coming in mooring up. So, you know, a couple squackers made, uh, we don't want it here, we don't want it in our backyard. So they dredged here the channel. Instead of doing that east channel, which wasn't in poor shape, but it would be, had been beneficial. So each thing that we hear is true, and it goes back to the 80s, so it's 30 years ago. So right now though, learning lessons from that and moving forward is you gotta shut down the one channel. Um, and even the fact that fishermen said, oh, it was easy to get out that way, we don't have to go all the way around. It's like, what's the difference, okay? Because you're killing things as it is or you're not providing a growing area for them. But the thing is for that harbor, it's, you gotta decide what's right. You're gonna hook up the deep water, deep water, you got to shut down the other one, shut down the other one. Great. That wreck right. don't matter to yeah. anybody anyways. I'm going to have to cut sorry. you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. All right. Um, Cy Kinsella. not to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to give you an update uh, on uh, some of the progress with deep water wind, if progress is the right word for it, uh, and the developments in the last week or so. Um, the, uh, I think one of the main developments is with my financial analysis that I've been doing and checking and double checking, if you turn to the, turn to the graph, oh, few pages in. Sai, could you speak up a little ah, right. louder? Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, move the mic so it's here. There you go. Uh, if you can turn to the, the graph on page, that graph there. I just want to talk about some of these numbers. Uh, and it may look complicated, but it's actually very straightforward. Um, and, you know, developing the... the uh, the financial model that is behind this uh, has brought me to the conclusion that if this proposal goes ahead, the average LIPA PSEG customer, the average household paying their electricity bill, uh, 
will have to pay between $48 and $162 extra every month in today's dollars for the next 20 years. That's how much this project will cost. And it'll start when the operation starts in 2022. Would you say uh, those numbers again, please? I'm sorry. I, I had to check them many times myself. Uh, $48 to $162. That's extra. That's above the market rate than people should be paying on their electricity bills. Uh, now, you might say, well, you know, it's a long way off and you know, it's not worth that much money then, but this is actually taken into consideration inflation. So this is in today's dollars, that is the amount. Uh, if you times that by the number of households in the town of East Hampton, it's about 7,500 households in East Hampton town, you come to an astonishing number of 85 million to 292 million dollars. So that number is the cash flows for every house brought back in today's dollars and for every house and added together for the, t for the town. That's what it will cost the residents of the town. I'm going to I'll say those numbers again, as shocking as they are. $85 million, 200, uh, between $85 million and $292 million over 20 years. That's what we'll have to pay on our electricity bills. So what do we get in return for and you're in Simon, in Simon, this is while the projected market price for offshore wind electricity is actually dropping. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why the numbers are so so large, because as the contract, as the years go on, the spread gets larger and larger. For example, if you take the final year of the contract, which is uh, 2042, the the range of uh, price that deep water will be charging people will be between uh, 33 cents per kilowatt hour and 58 cents per kilowatt hour. But the market price, which has been going in the opposite direction, is 4.8 cents per kilowatt hour, so just under 5 cents. So in other words, the upper range is more than 10 times the price. Uh, this is finance. This is the business of finance. Um, the, and I've been trying to demystify it and put it in real numbers, and these are the real numbers. This is what you will have to pay as individuals, this is what I will have to pay, it's what my husband will have to pay. Um, you know, I was watching Dell's terrific uh, video, and Dell, you can help me out here. There was a chap that was speaking about fisheries. He, he has a fish farm um, Dr. halfway through... Dr. Dr. Bob Valente. That's the chap. Yes, sir. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a section there where he talks about his bills. And I think he mentions his electricity bill of 3,000 odd dollars. I don't know how he's gonna pay his electricity bill because that $3,000 is gonna be closer to $12,000. Uh, and these are the re repercussions. This, this, um, uh, this will affect everybody and it will hit people hardest who can least afford it. It'll hit low-income families who will still have to pay for their electricity bill. It'll hit senior citizens. Uh, it'll hit small businesses, fisheries businesses. Um, everybody has to pay for electricity. Everyone has to keep their, their feet warm in winter. And this is my biggest concern, is that, and this is what's driving me. I'm one of the few people that is standing in front of um, uh, groups, you know, like the trustees and the town board, who doesn't have a financial interest. I have no vested interest on either side of this. Um, so I'm trying to present the facts as they are, as startling as they are. So that's, that's probably my biggest concern about this whole project, is the effect on the economy. It'll be a drag on the whole economy. It'll, it, it will be the equivalent of raising taxes a lot. Um, the other thing that uh, you've probably all read through the contracts yourself. Um, again, I, I, I've been reading contracts for 27 years. Um, 
I've never seen a contract like this before. Uh, in a lot of jurisdictions, many of those clauses just would be unenforceable uh, on the basis of uh, uh, unfair uh, contracts. Um, how do we get our uh, estimated increases of between 3 and 5 percent? What we're looking at here. Oh, oh the, es the, the market escalator. Yes. Um, that's a, that's a built-in price. Uh, typically, it's, it's around 5 percent, around the 5 percent mark. Uh, for fossil fuel generated uh, power plants, it's to compensate for the right, the increase in uh, petrol, gas, or whatever's driving the power plant. Um, the at the time when the contract was entered into, uh, that's a, that was a feeling of a reasonable price. You've got the Block Island wind farm, which had a uh, an increase of three and a half percent. You had the Maryland uh, contract, which was one percent. But this contract was before the Maryland contract, so you would expect it to be higher. But more importantly, the Maryland contract, which included Deepwater Wind, was a competitive contract. You had two wind companies competing against each other. Uh, Deepwater Wind for this contract had no other wind companies competing. Um, so you expect the price to be higher for that reason. Uh, plus also with information that Clint Plummer has told me, uh, he said the uh, proposal is front-loaded. Um, so there's a lot that's gone into it, but essentially we do not know what that number is because they've refused to disclose the price. Uh, and this is my point. We're all guessing. I think this is a very close guess. This is why I've given it a, high, a range. So is it, would it be accurate to mm. say that if there was no wind farm and just additional fossil fuel generation that these uh, arrows would basically take the same trajectory, three to five percent? It's, it's, not, a, it, it's not an all or, all or nothing well, question. Um, no, I'm just saying. If, if, if I were to do this again from today or a year ago, I would say no deal to deep water. I mean, that's just, I mean, well, anyone that agrees to this deal is in my well, mind, John, if you silly. took this, if you took this from the original RFP, which was for a 75 <coughs> megawatt shortfall, which was targeted as, the, I believe, the months of July and August, okay, and that's what this whole RFP, that's what Deep Water's foot in the door was. They were, there, they were there to provide minimal of 75 megawatts of power. Well, their own data on the Block Island thing. First off, Block Island is only running at what, 34.8% average? They, uh, they the pulled year. off 39 for their first year. I think it's 30, 39. Well, last okay, 39%. But that's the average, okay? When you analyze the months of July and August, I think it was closer to 18%. It was in the low so 20s, yeah. First, first and foremost, this community was never going to get 75 megawatts of power mm. out of this proposal. Wasn't going to happen on the best day, okay, in operation. Second to that, you say, well, okay, what fossil fuel plants were going to be retired from everything I can see is none. That's because exactly. because yeah, we're actually going to still need to balance this grid with some additional power to fill the same shortfall that this thing was supposed to take care of. I, Something I, that I've learned recently, uh, and it's actually worse than that, um, they've, they've got to build more um, de uh, f uh, fossil fuel power plants. And in fact, there is a plan to build an another one in, uh, where is it? Yeah. Yapang. Yapang. Um, and the reason why they've got to build more, which the irony of the whole situation is this wind farm is going to lead to more carbon dioxide admitted into the atmosphere on eastern Long Island. I mean, it's just silliness because they have to build the new ones because the rate of fluctuation with the wind farm, the old plants can't uh, increase and decrease supply quick enough. So when the wind stops, it stops very quickly and it might stop for three or four days. The battery facilities they're putting in go for a maximum of eight hours. So what you do after eight hours, I don't know. You Take can't a nap. <laughs> Sit in the dark. Yeah. In the dark. You can't recharge them because the wind isn't blowing still. And this is what happens. You know, if the wind's not blowing, there's no electricity. 
Um, so they've got to build these new power plants, uh, fossil fuel, uh, to hedge the risk, and they've got to be new ones because they've got to have a much faster response time. So, uh, so I mean, are they included in your cost, or are they going to be on top of your cost? <laughs> they're, they're not included in the cost. Uh, you know, d put on another two, three billion dollars. Uh, you know, they're the sort of numbers you're talking about. Right. I uh, have uh, a similar interest uh, with regards to the <clears throat> future kilowatt, and I try to get somebody from LIPA to call me uh, to talk to me about it. And of course, nobody called me back. But I called um, Tom Dinopoli's office, and he's a New York State controller, comptroller. And Bob Ward has got promised that he'll get back to me. He's one of the senior uh, men in the department uh, because he uh, feels that uh, we do have a right to know. It's like, um, you know, um, they dance and we pay the band. So, um, well, I think it's once. It, I don't know if he's going to be able to, you know, get anybody to uh, open their mouth at Liper. Um, but you know, I take. Uh, it really uh, annoys me that um, you know we're down this road. Uh, we're not going in, there. going into the meeting Thursday, and we don't even know something as critical as what is this going to cost us. Exactly. And I can't emphasize enough, um, never mind the second homeowners, okay? The local people yeah. in our community, you know, that clean houses for well-to-do people, clean their swimming pools, they are living on fixed incomes. There's no question about that. So, um, you know, I just, I'm just really taken back by it because um, I think we're I, all troubled by it. I, I, I see. I see what's going on, and we're going to be in big trouble if we have to pay, uh, you know, top dollar for this thing. I think that uh, what I've been saying, um, in a few, if this thing goes forward, and I'm, well, I hope it doesn't. And I think I don't think it will actually. I, it can't. <laughs> I, I just I cannot bring myself to believe that something like this could go forward. Um, the, if it were to go into the public service, uh, you know, Article 7, what's going to happen is uh, w there is a requirement for them to reveal the price uh, in Article 7. It's what, you know, I can send you the, the actual codes, the cit citation. Uh, the next thing that will happen is that the bid prices for uh, Connecticut and Massachusetts will be announced because every state, except for us, has an open bidding process. Um, so those bids will be announced. So if any official were to endorse this proposal a few months later, it will become public the difference between the market price and what they've just endorsed. Uh, and that could prove very embarrassing for anyone who endorses this proposal uh, without asking the price. And this is what I've been si, telling the town board. <coughs> Sai, why, why are we the only state that does not have the bidding process? That's a question you should be asking, Albany. <laughs> uh, it, it's an extraordinary situation. I, I've never seen, it, it's like, it's like Actually, Russia, it's, where people are appointed to a board um, by political um, uh, parties, there's no election, there's no transparency, this is LIPA. Uh, it's an anachronism, it's and it's been kept that way. It's only downstate New York. I believe upstate yeah. New York has uh, a system in place that's more open and yeah, you fair. Yeah. Your electricity. You're an electrical provider upstate. And downstate have New choice. York, Long Island. Yeah, not a monopoly. Can, can I ask um, but the system, the system that we have here, unfortunately, is, um, is very fraught. But I'm talking to the system that we have here now. That's why I'm here, because uh, you have an opportunity to ask the price. That's all that I'm wanting people to do. It's all that I want the town board to do at this time, is to provide the price and more information, more information on scientific research on the nearshore fisheries, which frightens me. The lack of the lack of lack of knowledge in that area, um, and no one's looking at it. Uh, the potential damage is is very significant to the economy. 
um, from so many different angles. Uh, I, I'm worried that the, the members of the town board are rushing this through uh, without providing the adequate information. One of their reasons for doing so, which I don't agree with, um, is that if we don't do it now, they will take the Nepeak or Hither Hills route um, and do it anyway. And we won't get our $8 million or $7.7 .7 million or whatever it is. Um, it, it's, it is an extraordinary argument. It's like um, going and buying a house and asking the price for a house and the seller telling you, I'm sorry, but we can't tell you, it's a trade secret. Um, would tell you, you like at the closing. <laughs> yeah, um, but if you buy it now, we'll give you a, we'll give you a shrubbery, a $10,000 shrubbery. And everyone's rushing in to buy the house for the $10,000 shrubbery without asking the price of the entire house. Um, that's what I fear. I'm, I'm just banging my head against a brick wall saying, please, you know, don't do this. Ask, ask the price. Can I just ask this hmm. question again? I'm sorry for being so yeah. thick-headed about it, but if we were just talking about a projected normal rate increase with generation that we have now, what would be the average annual percentage rate increase to, that we would expect? I think we would actually be less than this. It'd be less um, than three to five percent. Yeah. Uh, the, but that's not the alternative. If you're talking about um, opportunity cost, uh, really the opportunity cost is redoing it, which you could do in two months, uh, on a competitive bid process. Uh, these other bids had five wind farms bidding. But we don't have the ability to do that. You do. Just say no. Or then they come into that peak. Ah, that's that. Thank you. No, I said I don't agree with it. I don't think they can. That would cost them, and this is this is actually what I found. But Simon, it'll it, it'll cost them, but that will come from the benefits package, mm. the cost of doing that. But it can also come through Wayne Scott with or without our permission. Providing it, pro it can, providing but it's a possibility. It is. Right. It is. But it nobody is. wants to talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I think it's not fact. We've been talking yeah. about that. I think a lot. Francis, I think yeah. it's a very good point. Can they? If they decide to do it um, and circumvent uh, trustee jurisdiction or mm -hmm. challenge trustee jurisdiction, mm -hmm. I can assure you that they'll have a fight on their hands and that will delay the entire process enough that they will lose their incentives, their tax incentives. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to do that. And with regards to the peak and Hithered Hills, I don't believe that what I was telling you, if you flip through your, your papers there, you'll see a, an off an off uh, white coloured paper. Yes. Um, that's a survey of a building in, uh, in East Hampton, in the front of the building in East Hampton. Uh, my husband brought this to my attention. Because um, every time I speak with a couple of the um, town board members, they say, oh, well, Simon, you know, we know they can't go down the railway tracks because of the, the railway trestles, uh, but they'll just take it along Highway 27 and up Highway 114. Mm -hmm. I thought about this. I said, you know, that, that, that's, they're going to dig up the main arterial road in, in the East End. That road, for the last 100 years, people have been burying wires, water pipes. Yeah, I don't uh, think they go that way. They, they, if they do go that way, it will cost them a fortune. It will take them years. And they'll have a fight on their hands. Um, uh, you know, they've got to go through the main street, they've got to dig up 12 miles of Highway 27. It's a very sensitive area as well. I yeah. Think, of, for a variety of landscape. There's and, also and the MTA the rail. No, they yeah. can't go the MTA route. Well, they, they, need they have to peel off the MTA route before they get into the village of East Hampton because it, because it, it goes over roads and that. Yeah. Okay, so that would put them coming up you know, in Twist Hampton? Jump, well, they would jump and take some of the back roads, like perhaps Town Lane or something no, like no, they that. Can't, they can't, they can only jump off where the railway intersects with a state road. Because if it doesn't intersect with a state road, well, they have to gonna, go through. We're going to jump into some town 
some town property. Well, there okay. is there is control here. I, I, I disagree with the, the, the concept that we're so afraid of not getting our VIG on this project but that, the thing we're is that we're afraid not to make a real conscious decision on this. You know, hey, listen, it's real easy. Somebody offered me some money, man. I wanna, I wanna go to the movies or I wanna, you know, whatever. Russian hookers, little shit. You know, everybody has their own little thing, but you got the money spent, okay? And I feel like we're, we're kind of in that position right now. An offer's been made. We've, we've thought of all of these great ideas that we can do with the money, but I think it's real easy to forget about what our role is here. Yeah. The offer is very simple, and that is, do you want $7.7 .7 million now? Or do you want 85 to $292 million over the duration of the 20, 20 years? That's the choice because uh, they're the relative costs. Um, and if anyone says to me, you know, I'll take the $7.7 .7 million now, I'd, I'd have them committed. Um, I mean, it's silly. It's absolute silliness. Um, and that's, that's the choice. It's taken me ages to do these numbers and, and to realise this, just digging around. But the actual calculation is very simple. Um, it's very straightforward, and it relies on numbers that are publicly available. Uh, so I'm happy to, to, you know, have anyone look at these numbers and challenge them. I'm happy to have a debate on Thursday night with Deepwater Wind about these numbers, um, and they'll stand up to scrutiny. Uh, the other, uh, you know, I won't take up any more of your time. I'm sure you'd much rather be doing other things, as would I. Uh, the biggest thing that stands up out of the contract um, is that the trustees don't get any money. It's zero. Um, and that, that I find extraordinary. Um, it goes into a bank account and it's controlled by the town. Uh, I called Rick yesterday saying, Rick, do, do the trustees have their own bank account? I mean, <laughs> I, I'm sure that you have to have your own bank account. So why? Is it going to the town? And if it does go to the town, are you going to have to fight tooth and nail every time you want to spend a dollar? Are you going to justify it? You're speaking uh, specifically to the fisheries yeah. donation? 55% of the funds are allocated to fishery projects. Mm -hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the town doesn't have great experience in managing fisheries or water bodies. Uh, that's the purview of the trustees. And I think the trustees do an excellent job on that. Um, the only water body that I can think of that the town has managed uh, recently is the, uh, is the aquifer in Wainscott, which we can't drink anymore as a result. Uh, so that, that's one extraordinary thing about the contract is that the town is taking all the money, whereas, uh, and, and they're, you know, I believe they're overreaching. Um, the, other things about the contract is it's so, so poorly written that Deepwater Wind has a lot of scope to close Beach Lane. Uh, it, doesn't say, it says temporary closures. It doesn't say how long a temporary closure is. It doesn't say how many temporary closures they can have. It says that we can close Beach Lane if we think it's commercially reasonable to. So I can imagine a subcontractor coming along closing off the entire beach lane because, well, you know, it'll cost him too much, he thinks, um, to jig his vans or trucks or equipment around. Uh, or he does want to park his equipment somewhere, so he parks it in the middle of beach lane and closes off the, off the laneway so residents can't get to their homes, so people can't access Wainscott Beach. Towards the end of the contract, it talks about um, closing off Wainscott Beach during construction. Again, there's, there's no period, there's no time frame, there's no frequency. So this contract allows Deepwater Wind to close Beach Lane and Wainscott Beach. My understanding of that contract, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, is that that's sort of a first stab, that's a proposed contract. I mean, if we would enter, in, or the town would enter into a contract, you know, it's not going to be 
deep waters language entirely. Yeah. Am I wrong about that? Well, well, we've yet to see what the town board thinks of that contract and how they want to use it, but I think you make a great point. But in my opinion, from the most basic legal principles, the fact that we have two separate municipalities, the trustees and the town board, even contemplating entering into a single contract mm. is, uh, <laughs> is absolutely crazy. I mean, we are two completely separate entities with different interests. We have a beach. They have the road. We have our fisheries and other interests and our bottom lands. They have their interests. I mean, I, I agree with, with uh, holding a, an open meeting together, but if we're starting to negotiate these things, we're, we're different groups with our, di with our own different interests. We need our own yes. contract. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if this were, I don't think this is a professionally written contract. Um, Nor do I. It, it's, uh, yeah. I think what, what you're saying is well, it lacks it's specifics. It definitely lacks, lacks, lacks specifics. specifics. Half of it's missing. Yeah. They're, they're, they're huge. The beach lease is not there. Um, exhibits one, a, uh, one and two, is that right? They're, they're not there. I haven't even seen them. So we're going into a public hearing to talk about a contract, and yet we haven't even been given a copy of the full contract, which is, a, 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 again, we're going in blind. We're asked, asking to give our, an opinion on something without knowing the price and without knowing what the contract is. My understanding is that the public meeting is for the public to come and voice their opinion, concerns, thoughts, and that we're not really having a discussion. That's my that's my impression that it is to be held for the public it's for us to hear to express. information gathering. Yes. Yes. And but then we would we are listening to the public, and as a board, we will take back and discuss amongst ourselves and, and weigh in on the community. But I don't believe that we are, Francis, and you know, well. that. Am I correct? Yeah. Well, I think so the, the, the resolution, uh, the town resolution that was passed, says it's a public hearing to hear matters pertaining to the lease and right. beach easement or, or right. road easement, right. however but it's phrased. But it's very specific. It says, you know, we are listening to the public on this specific matter. Yes. So my point is, how can we make... Uh, informed observations or questions uh, about something that we haven't been given. Mm -hmm. Well, then I think that what you're saying, Chris, uh, um, the two separate, two separate contracts finished, agreed upon, and then we have a public hearing. Would that be what well, that, you were suggesting? Uh, that and, that and would be a step in the right direction, plus also I've never heard of a no public price. hearing on a contract. The con well, the, the terms of the contract that, would that's then... That's usually done in executive session between the boards. But and that's how the right, but then you would present to the, t to the community and they would know what the contract would mean and they could voice their opinion thereafter before it's actually agreed upon. On a more complete document. Right. Yeah. right. If so this is just a preliminary draft, then it's really a little difficult to... Have a, have a public meeting. I, I mean, you'd want all the information. I've never heard of a public hearing on a completed contract. Well, ever. if we're representing the community and the community but, but is... But what I'm saying is any contract that the town board comes up with does not go to a public hearing. The contract is drawn up between the two parties. There's a basic agreement. Mm -hmm. They listen, and then we decide whether we want to enter into this or not. And then we would negotiate the, the formal mm -hmm. contract. And then we don't go to a public hearing with that again. I mean, I've never seen a hearing for that. Right. Um, There's just so much I missing. Think, it's I think it's not necessarily a contract. I think it's the what information is missing from this from from this um, paperwork that we're going to go by mm -hmm. uh, with with this information missing. If if in fact after the public speaks, we get more of that information. Maybe that would elicit people wanting to discuss some of that new information, w which w would s seem like that's when you would want to have a public hearing, is once you had all the information in front of you mm -hmm. and not with a big chunk missing. That's just what I'm thinking here, what I think I'm hearing. I, d I don't know if that's that appropriate or... Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. No, I, no, I think you're absolutely no, I think that's right. Okay. If you know, if the public are asked, being asked to comment on something, um, they, they should have to have be a basis told by which they can comment. But what we're going to what do it, it is that there is being proposed, and at the moment, I don't know what's being proposed. 
Is wind technology a good idea? Yes, it's terrific. I'm all for wind technology. Should we be paying a you know, million dollars a year for each house for it? No. That's too expensive. But Simon, uh, let's go back to that. Yeah. The numbers you have here, I'm going to assume that these numbers will also go to all the ratepayers on Long Island, because that's the way yes. it's covered. So you're saying every, every household on Long Island is going to be paying $148 a month, up to $162 yeah. a month yes. more. Yes, for 20 years. And, and I still don't quite understand how you come up with these numbers when you don't know ah. what the number is. Okay, good, good question. I, it's, actually, it's actually very straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, the green line, mm -hmm. the market price. Right. I've taken an average of four um, market forecasts. The first market forecast was a forecast by Deepwater Wind themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, another forecast was by uh, Bloomberg. Another forecast was by McKinsey, both internationally reputable firms. Another mm -hmm. forecast was uh, by, I can't remember his name, it's on. Mm -hmm. Adair Turner. Yes. It's, it's underneath, it's, it's underneath right yeah. here. Um, so I did this, the, I've taken those forecasts and averaged them down uh, and, and used as a starting point Deepwater Wind's own last bid, which is $16.06. .06. Uh, 16 cents, 16.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. So a lot of the information is actually Deepwater Wind's own information. Uh, so I, I don't think anyone could really dispute the, the green line. Uh, 16 sounds low. That's their own bid. I, I, yeah. th I thought the, they're not, the number they presented was actually 19. Okay, so, okay, so Simon's yeah. number is low, Hang is on, what I'm they saying. They didn't present, can I tell you what? They didn't present any numbers. That's, that's, that's the problem here. Yeah. Did, but there, Francis, there was, that's a very good point. If, 19, no, it's, no, it if it 19, was 19 cents, it was if, you at, if you look at the graph, increase, so. um, yeah, they were saying yeah. $1.19 a month. Right, right. If it was that's a surcharge, right. right. Yeah. That's separate, yeah. Okay, well, and if it were could, That could escalate yeah. as well, I don't know. I misspoke. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I was just about to say, if it is 19 cents, that's actually in the middle of my mm -hmm. range. Right. Uh, and that when the, uh, in 2022, when the wind farm goes online, the market price is 10 cents. So it's still nearly double the market price when, when it goes online. So now, because it's an educated market guess on what they're going to charge us because they've refused to tell us what they're going to charge us, I've put in a range, a high range and a low range. Um, so there's scope. This is why when I say it's going to cost the average um, consumer between $42 and $162, that's a big range and that's why that is such a, a big range because I really don't know. Um, it's going to fall somewhere in there. <coughs> Uh, the numbers on the, on the deep water wind contract site are built out. And what, the, how I've done it is very simple. I've put the market price per year in a nominal, nominal sense. Then I put a high low range um, for the sell price, which is deep water winds price. And I've worked out the difference for each year. Simple subtraction. Uh, I know what the uh, average residential um, consumer uses. I think it's 7,660 yeah, so, kilowatts. Simon, on your numbers here, have you, base, have you based those numbers on what the projected performance of these turbines is, what their projected output is? Uh, that, that's, this is a um, consumer side analysis, so that would be irrelevant. It would, it's assuming it's that they can... It's only the cost per kilowatt. Yeah, it's only, it's only cost per kilowatt for wind generated electricity. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't... It doesn't address the fact that... Well, it doesn't, it doesn't take into account what the overall value is of the wind, that, of the electric that we're buying from wind production uh, in well, our overall bill. In a way it does, because the low mark um, takes into consideration the fact that uh, at times the consumer would not be using 100% wind generated electricity. So it's, it's actually half. If you were to say 100% wind, that low number would be 96 cents per kilowatt hour. But it's half that. 
So it, it does take into consideration different wind usage. Uh, so you multiply that difference, the high-low difference, between the market price and the deep water wind price by PSG, PSEG's own number, which is, I believe, 7,360 7, kilowatts per year. Um, that's the latest number uh, that they've published. Uh, gives you the amount that the average consumer spends on electricity each year. You project that out over the 20 years, then you get the net present value, which is one number, which is the, uh, the valuation for the annuity. I've used a discount rate of 1.5%. Um, and that gives you the total value. And then you divide that by 20 to get the year and divide it by 12. If you're correct, they will never be able to sell another wind farm anywhere else because that's, nobody else would buy it. That's why they should be using the market price and not the deep water wind price. The market price is the market price for wind electricity. This is the frustrating part about it. Wind technology is a wonderful technology, but they're charging us between four and six times what they should be charging us for wind technology. They're using wind technology as a disguise. They're distracting us with saying it's all green, green technology. Um, don't worry about the numbers. Well, I like green technology, but I also worry about the numbers. See you Thursday night. <laughs> Thank you very get, much for get your some time. Sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Sai. Yes. Thank you, Sai. Thank you, Sai. If anyone wants to talk with me through the numbers, feel free. You've got my mobile phone. Just a, a quick question on the survey again. This is Main Street in Newtown Lane, and I'm just trying to decide. This is the other way for the cable? Yeah, every time I speak, through. there are some board members that I speak to, and you know they say, oh, Simon, if we don't do it now, they're going to run the cable down Highway 27. Mm -hmm. That's... Highway 27 going through the middle of East Hampton. Right. So I see Newtown Lane here. So it's got this gas running in there, electricity, uh, water running, crossways. Mess. Yeah. They've been, you know, digging and putting things under that road for 100 years. You know, so. Good. You had a question at the front of <laughs> your such a good page. Oh, paper yeah. tonight, and I, thank you. I just uh, noticed request. Yeah. Thank for you for the I, uh, public hearing. Yes, there was, I, I received an email today saying that um, people will not be permitted to give a, a presentation um, or using a, a slideshow presentation, uh, except for deep water wind, of course, um, unless they have permission from the town or the trustees. So I was going to ask your permission tonight whether I can give a, a very short um, slide presentation. I just want to make a comment about this because I was one of the original LTV board members and when Fraser Doherty created LTV, it is a public soapbox, he called it, and it is a place that you can come and, and speak freely, mm -hmm. freedom of speech, present whatever you wish on LTV. It's our public access television station and I think if we are to have, personally, a public meeting, it means that the public can speak and utilize visual... Uh, visuals, if you wish, um, to express what you are saying. So, yeah, I'm confused. Uh, Deepwater Wind is giving a presentation at a public hearing? Is that yeah, this yeah. is supposed to be a public hearing, and that sort of... Yeah, this is new to me. Well, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I, and I'm like just wondering who is renting the space. Because then. if they're able to present, then I think every, anyone and everyone should be able yeah. to yeah. present. Who, who's, whose decision was that? It hasn't been brought First up. we've heard of it. Right, but, but Sorry, are you no. sure about this? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to make a motion then that, um, <laughs> if, that this is a public hearing, and Could I believe that that means that we are all able to express uh, our uh, that that no, we sh uh, that everyone who w wants to speak and present at the meeting should have that right. I that is public way. access. Well, we have to confirm this tomorrow. Yes, okay. we'll look into this further, Simon. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. Thank for you. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for coming. Simon, if this is if this is true, I think we can probably uh, deal with it on Thursday night. Okay. Well, I'll come prepared. Be, yeah, okay. come yeah. prepared to present. Thank you. Yeah, LTV just has to have the equipment set up so that mm -hmm. he could. Well, I'm sure present. it's going to be set up. Oh, sure. Well, it's for for. Be 
No, for presentation on behind in the screen. There's oh, a big know. screen we behind. Well, we See, that's why in advance. Well, if that's true, that that uh, deep water is going to be presenting, I would assume mm -hmm. that they'll be set up for that. Right. But I'm just I'm wondering why is only deep that. water wind able mm -hmm. to to present? I'm really Are surprised they, that they're presenting who at is, a public hearing. Is our town paying for the uh, use of the studio, or is Deepwater Wind? That's what I am taking from this. I have no idea. Did you have any luck uh, getting a meeting together? Not yet. I no. tagged. But I want to go to to the studio and lay out how the seating's going to be for the two boards. Mm -hmm. And I, honestly, I think it's inappropriate for Deepwater Wind to be presenting at a public hearing. Mm -hmm. I agree. They've had 19 public presentations. Yeah, absolutely. This was for our public to speak. Right. I don't think yeah. it's appropriate at all. Right. It's for, for interested and I, public. You know, I feel you know that that's almost a, a game changer. Yeah, I mean, if, if nobody knew about this, um, right? How can our board not even know so about it? The town know, knows about it. Well, why don't we find out? Um, Chris, have you ever gone to a public hearing where one side presented? No, absolutely not, and that was right. not part of the intention of right. this group or the board in any of our meetings thus far. So let's look at that first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Look at the town resolution that's passed, and I don't know, let's find out. We'll get to the bottom of this in the morning. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to new business. Akabonic Hog Creek, application of Peter Joyce on behalf of Torrendale at 285 Kings Point Road for bulkhead and stair repair. Yes. And this is, um, I went to the zoning board today, um, it, and I actually went up and I took pictures as soon as I got this, and I'll pass these around. It would appear to me that the dock, um, that the dock, that the stairway and the bulkheading is in perfect condition. And I'm, as I looked into the file, it seems that since the, the owner that I had on the property with, before was P-F-E-F-F-E-R, and now it's Torrendale. So it seems that, um, I'll start here with you, that it looks as though they have a history of applying for a permit repeatedly in the case of storm, and that's kind of the where I ended up um, in, in what I perceive with the zoning board, that they also felt that maybe this was the same situation. They had a permit in place, um, which would have given them six months. It expired in 2016. And now the, this owner is applying for bulkhead repair and stair repair. But from the pictures I took, I don't see any need for repair of any kind. Both neighbors along the entire, uh, I would say five properties have the same bulkheading. It must have been done all together. It looks to me to be in perfect condition. The stair is raised for the winter. Um, and Did you ever experience that before? I did write to Jim because I thought they said Francis, somebody well, suggested that when, so, when somebody's bulkhead is in mint shape and yet they put in a, a repair application. Makes no sense. No, no, it, looks brand, it looks really quite new. And the, here's the history. Some Are of you it sure is, you went to the right address? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, the whole thing. I've, whole I've here, gone right? to the wrong one before. So. No, I, I parked uh, next door. <coughs> I walked up. I made sure that it was the right one. And I looked yeah, at the tax map number. Nice. Yeah. Um, this permit application came in May 3rd. What's the address? Uh, t um, 285 East Hampton. looks like it's a little decrepit. Yeah, well, it's, it's like pulled up. Answer. It's pulled it up for the winter. Oh, it's retractable. Yeah. But okay. this runs all the yeah. way down this way and all the way down that way. Well, I actually you know walked on this. We can ask them to come in and down. explain why they need to care. Yeah. Um, it shows Keith Grimes as being the construction company. The um, agent is Peter yeah. Joyce. Yeah. And the estimated cost of the project is listed here. We should ask them. But I can't see anything wrong with that. Maybe I need another pair of eyes. But they did, as I said, have a permit in place before, and I was told today that that permit was only good for six months, and that was mm -hmm. 2016. Was the work done? Yeah. I mean, it looks like maybe the... Something's being shored up. Shored up. Um, you know, Susan, it is good to go with a partner sometimes, so you do get... I know, but it's been a little, busy. you know, I, <laughs> yes. Busy. Yeah, no, and, it's great that you got out there. Um, yeah, you're right. It could just be such a small aspect of it, and we see something being... Shored up now. Shored up there, it says, yeah. Um, also, yeah, reconstruct in place a 90 foot, 95 foot existing bulkhead using vinyl sheathing, access to be from waterside by barge. So. I don't know if that's vinyl. 
Yeah, that might be what they're doing. Just with maybe they want to replace it. Did you notice that the sheathing was vinyl by chance? I I believe so. My memory is. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I think so. It was like a fake wood. But the sheathing book. goes yeah, plastic. Yeah. So, right. Why would we care? All right. Um, I, I yeah, would throw them a call. Yeah. Owners, pro um, adjacent property owners, Torndell. These are all the properties that I walked, mm -hmm. and they're all the same. Whoever did the work. Okay. Before, obviously, they did it as a group yeah. effort. So I would be happy to return so that I can um, be re-educated then. Uh, no, no, it's a little bit of a, 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 a mystery. Yeah, no, I've never seen that before. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I kept my eye on Yeah, no, no, I, and I'm not even saying you're missing anything. It could be just a case where they ha did the work mm -hmm. and, you know, they're playing some kind of paper trail and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't I know. I was going to say, is it possible if the work was done without a permit and now they're trying to clean it up? I didn't want to say that. <laughs> no, that's not true. That happens. I didn't think of it. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. That's a, yeah. because that's this, a tough one. The, yeah. the, the former project. owner this, is, this is um, a different pristine. name. Yeah. And I think possible. they may have sold yeah. it you as it was, and then this person realizes that the permit's not. Okay. Yes, it's Peter Joyce, the agent. Reach out. Reach out and see what the story is. Okay. Yeah. This table. Good luck. I think they need yeah, to in 2016 explain. it expired. In, it only has six months. So I, it seems to me that this owner sold to this owner, and then they realized that there was nothing there for them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Chat with the agent, and we'll bring it up next time. Okay. Good. And then um, I, is that? That's it for Akabana Cod Creek, new business. Yeah. Okay, because we'll I get, have. We'll get back to old business if that's what you okay, have. Okay, I have some other stuff. Okay. Um, administrative. Okay. As you're all aware, um, Lori will be retiring at the end of this month, I believe on effective May 30th. Um, she would like to work for us part-time. Um, you know, it's very pretty, pretty much two days a week. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. And I do have a resolution she's here. Tonight. Oh, she's watching from home. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to know where the cups and the sugar is. <laughs> uh, make sure I have the right one. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, whereas the office business of East Hampton Town Trustees is generally conducted by a secretary, and whereas Lori Miller Carr is now secretary and employed by the town of East Hampton, to conduct the office duties of the trustees, whereas after 30 years of service, Ms. Lori Miller-Carr will retire from her employment with the town of East Hampton as trustee secretary, effective May 29th, 2018, and has expressed a desire to return as part-time secretary to the East Hampton trustees beginning May 31st, 2018. Be it further resolved that Ms. Miller-Carr Uh, she, uh, this is Ms. Britton, uh, will be employed by the town of East Ham by the East Hampton Town Trustees for two days per week and be compensated at 24 hours per hour for a maximum of $17,000 per year mm -hmm. from trustee funds and effective May 19th, 2018, Ms. Miller Carr will no longer receive a stipend of $135 per week from trustee funds. Therefore, be it resolved that Clerk is hereby authorized to employ Lori Miller Carr as part time secretary for the East Hampton Town Trustees for the year 2018, effective May 31st. I'd like Can to I make I a motion to mm -hmm. accept this so I resolution. Second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So that leaves us without a secretary, and since we have one who's been well trained by Lori. <laughs> Who could that be? <laughs> we would like to make a proposal to hire her as our secretary. Yes, yes. I just have a question though. Is that does that fall under civil service? Not, well, rule would, where you have to put it, post it, post the position. We're working towards hiring her as a legislative secretary, where we won't be won't need to do that. But she will not be but, um, protected under civil service. But, okay, but prior to that, it has always been a civil service position. Correct. So and the hope is that um, once she's able to take the test, that she could then move into that position, hopefully. 
but you could hire her provisional on on the on the uh, you could hire her provisional under the, under the civil service law with with the understanding that she would be appointed by taking the next opening test and passing. Can you do that if there's an active list? But yeah, that's what comes. Yeah, if there's an active list, yeah. you I believe you no, have to call for the list. We we've gone through all that. Right. Um, if you hire her off of that, she has to be the top three ranking. Right. But under civil um, service law, isn't that how it's supposed to work? Not with the legislative secretary. So we can hire her this way now and hope that everything else falls in place later. Yeah. I, there's a lot of that that goes on in the town, and I have to say nothing against Arlene. I don't agree with that. Civil service is civil service, and there's a reason why the things are done in, in the order that they are. Mm -hmm. And to try and Civil circumvent service. that. We're not circumventing it. I just the don't town, think that's the right town to other applicants. The town is entitled to four legislative secretaries. They currently have two. So we have the ability to do this. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's just. We're leaving a slot unfilled. We're taking advantage of it's, it. I know it's happened in other positions within mm -hmm. the township and it's just unfortunate that you know qual people that are qualified at the time that are on the list that have taken the test and that have passed you know don't get offered positions or jobs because these you know you, you appoint you make you make the position an appointed and position we're rather to than make a this civil appointment. service yeah, but it's it's not it's I don't think it's fair to those people that have gone through the, well, at the same, taking the test and applying okay. and paying for the test We've taking spent the a test year and training passing the test and Arlene. staying on the list. I understand that. I don't think anyone else right now would be qualified to fill no. that position. No, and that's a, that's the deal. Well, you okay. don't know that because you haven't interviewed anybody. Well, well, they haven't been trained. You haven't called for the mm -hmm. list and interviewed. Well, I just don't think it's fair for those people okay. that, mm -hmm. that these kinds of appointments take place within the town. Yeah. Being a civil service employee, knowing that I, think I had to take the test and I had my position on the list As of did I. hundreds of people and, you know, waiting quite a few years before I was ever even offered an interview, being eligible to get an interview and then getting the position because okay. I was. Again, as an elected that. body where we are entitled with agreement from civil service, from CSEA, that the town can hire four legislative secretaries. They currently have two. There are two slots open. We are entitled to take one of them. There's nothing underhanded here. No, I'm not saying it's underhanded. I just well, don't think it's fair to I understand what you're saying. Those fine. civil service, those people that's that fine. have. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Well, sir. I don't. I <coughs> personally don't think it would be plan. fair to be, to basically encumber this offer, office right. with a new secretary who is totally unfamiliar with the with the with the filing system, with the application system, with anything else. And you know what? To me, what bothers me about that is we put somebody in a position where the person that suffers is the general public, okay? You get the general public's coming in, they're expecting timely adjudication of their applications, and one of the key things to that is a competent and capable secretary. I do believe Arlene has proven herself to be competent and capable, and I think in due time, she probably will pass and do very well on the civil service test, and I would look forward to that. Is there something you need to read, or could we make a motion? Well, we'll, we'll finish having the discussion. Okay. I think Any, that, anybody have anything I'm done. else? I, I agree with Jim. I think it would really compromise the smooth running of the board if we brought somebody in mm -hmm. fresh. I right. have no idea what they're doing. Well, I happen to think that Arlene is completely competent at oh, this yeah. juncture. I, I, I and a, a wonderful just, addition to the um, board. And she's been terrific in I my limited period of time. But I understand what works, you're saying. And, right, and, but, and, and that it's, you know. 
Um, I also there want to ask, are we, are we to follow. personnel questions are usually held? Um, I mean, this is a discussion about personnel, and we are speaking about Arlene. No, it's is not that a permitted? It's not a disciplinary action. What okay. Yeah, right. I just want to make sure not not there are practice. rules. So. Yeah, no, that's good. No. I did pass the deputy tax assessor test. I'm number 12 in the county as deputy tax assessor. And I passed, I took the assistant tax assessor test also. And I did turn down the in, the internal. You do have an opening for, in the, for an assessment assistant. And um, I would like to work for the trustees. I mean, I've trained mm -hmm. for it. No, and, uh, I, th I think you do. No, but I mean, I have taken the civil service test. You. Um, I'm just in there. Yes, I have taken it's I the civil service protocol. protocol and, and so, good. Uh, yes. Yeah. I've taken so it sounds like you're, you're in the system. Yes. Uh, All right, good. So are you going to make a motion then to? Well, let me read it off. Oh, okay. sorry. Whereas the office business, the town of Bees, the East Hampton Town Trustees is generally conducted by a full-time and part-time secretary, and whereas Arlene Tessa is now part-time secretary to the trustees, whereas Ms. Miller Carr is retiring from her employment with the Town of East Hampton as trustee secretary, effective May 29, 2018, we, and will be employed by the trustees as a part-time secretary. Whereas the trustees require the service of a full-time secretary as well as a part-time secretary, be it further resolved that Ms. Tesser will be hired by the Town of East Hampton as a legislative secretary and work full-time in the trustees' office. Therefore, be it resolved that the clerk is hereby authorized to employ Arlene Tesser as full-time secretary to the East Hampton Town Trustees, effective May 31st, 2018, and she shall, shall receive a stipend of $135 per week from the trustee funds for compensation of her attendance and recording of minutes at the trustee meetings and any additional work required besides her regular office hours. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and one last. Um, I met with Robert Cold, who used to be a pump out boat operator. Yeah. Um, if you remember last year, we hired a part time person to fill in for those days off of um, Sid, and he's interested in this position. So he and Sid uh, have spoken together. They can work out a schedule between them, and um, he's looking for about two days a week and whatever Sid may need from time to time. I think it's I think it's great. He's got the experience, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'm in favor of hiring him. I also met with him. Mm -hmm. I, think yeah, I think it's a good fit. Guy. Yep. Great. Yep. Great. Yeah. Good he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Last Excellent. year, last year was a little difficult. Mm -hmm. Filling that slot. But yeah. it was. <clears throat> I was going to wonder what the dress code was going to be this year. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. So let me order Something this white. <laughs> yeah. uh, resolved that the Board of Trustees shall mm -hmm. employ Robert Cole on a seasonal part time basis to assist the two trustee pump out operators to remove waste material from boat holding tanks and harbors and water bodies within the town of East Hampton from approximately mid May through October 2018. And therefore, be it resolved, Mr. Cold will be paid $20 per hour for up to 30 hours a week, each out of trustee funds. I'd like to make a motion. And second, second that emotion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. You second that emotion. I know. I heard myself say that. I second that emotion. Just a second these flashback. Yeah. I know. We'll have yeah, the, these uh, guys have been doing it for <laughs> what is that? Yeah. years. The disco ball. But Sid's looking to eventually retire okay. fairly soon. This may or may not be his last season. How many full pumps are there? Two? One Two. Month, I think we're yeah. pumping out. Uh, yeah, plate. and uh, Bob so would be working in Montauk. That we do, the pump Thank God. Oh, it's like, it's my All right. sphere of swimming. Beaches. Um, discussion regarding trash cans. And trash <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, I had a big old presentation I was going to do. Not too big, really. But I, I did bring some pictures and stuff, and I, I want to talk about this. I know the clock is ticking as summer is approaching. Mm. Let me just throw this bug in your ear. 
and we'll discuss it next at the next meeting because I know our minds are on this Thursday and we got horseshoe business to take care of tonight. <clears throat> but <clears throat> as some of you may know, one of the reasons I'm sitting here is because of trash on our beaches, um, specifically trash cans because uh, it, on the outside of a governing body, I fought against it um, for quite a few many years, uh, trying to get cans off the beach because they're not being properly handled in the parking lots. Why move them halfway to the water was my contention. And, and I still stand by that. Um, uh, however, um, I ran into a little uh, problem when I approached the trustees with that idea. Not so much a problem, this was several years ago. In fact, the entire board except one member was all in favor of addressing the village about um, removing the trash cans and putting them back on, on the, the uh, uh, the beach heads rather than in the sand on the beaches and leaving them there overnight and people would use them and fill them up and put stuff around the around them rather than in them and it just created a big mess so I had the the, the trustees blessings but uh, it came to a point where the the village really wasn't didn't want to do that um, they were asked nicely by the trustees uh, again they were told that it wasn't going to happen. Um, the trash cans were tagged, red tagged, by a member, one of the tr former trustees. Uh, she was in turn called to the uh, office of the village mayor. And uh, I'm not gonna get too much into it, but it wasn't a happy scene. Um, at which point I decided to myself that maybe um, since I'm, I'm at a dead end on the outside, that perhaps I would run for trustee and try to take care of this from the inside, and here I am. So it, it's kind of an interesting story. Of course, it's gotten a lot more broader for my concerns being a trustee now, and I'm much more uh, uh, proud to be part of this, this government body here with you all. However, the point still remains. We're coming up on summer. There's a lot of reasons um, that um, I don't think trash cans belong on, our, on the beaches. Um, I'll go through them next time and I'll show you pictures and I'll, I won't do a long thing, I won't bore you. I, I, I'll, I'll do it quickly. Uh, but I really want you to get the good visual. I want you to get it from me because I do spend every day on the beach in the morning picking up trash. It's part of what I do now. If I don't do it, then I've broken a long streak and my OCD will not, not <laughs> handle that very well. So I continue to do it. Um, and uh, so the bug I want to put in your ear is, you know, imagine it. Uh, try to think of how much better. Try to think of some pros and cons. Um, even at the very least, I, I would ask the trustees to maybe support me and perhaps even, you know, at the, I don't like them on the beach at all. I think it promotes laziness amongst a bunch of other issues. But even if we could come to some agreement where maybe they were removed at the end of the day and replaced in the morning, I mean, that's kind of meeting the village halfway, but still, it really, the problems happen overnight. It's when they continue to be used, but there's no more pickup, and that's when the animals come out, and that's when the seagulls start ripping it apart, and once it's on the beach and the elements and the wind, it gets all over the beach and the water, and that we don't want to see either. But I'll, 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 I, I know we could have a little discussion about it. I really think it's important. I don't think it should be that big of a deal. I think, again, it's just logical. Can't, the trash doesn't belong on the beach. We, we can fix it off the beach, I think. And I'd like to kind of discuss that more, if I could. At, at, with that being said, one other issue is this uh, East Hampton Town Trustee Community Beach uh, Stewardship Adopt-a-Beach Program. I don't wanna just ignore it. 
Um, somebody worked really hard on it. I, I suspect Tyler, uh, among uh, several other people, and he did turn it over to me. And I know there's probably been um, a little bit of uh, angst on maybe some of the members here that might not agree with the program. I, I think w what I've done is I've made a few real minor changes, and as we spoke once before about it, a lot of it has to do with all that recognition jazz that come, came along with it afterwards. I think just putting it on the website and maybe if at once a year you want to throw a, a thank you in the newspaper, I think that's sufficient. But as far as signs on the beach, I really thought that was not probably not the right way to go. Um, um, and and uh, really, that, that was my only concern, other than the amount of time required. Five times a year, um, having the responsibility is, is okay if you're gonna be off the radar and you don't really wanna make it a big deal. But if you're really into doing this program, I thought that maybe during the summer months, this is just me again, and I know I'm, I'm gung-ho garbage dude, but uh, it seems to me it's not unreasonable to ask a person that's in, that really wants to do something like this to do it once a week between the summer months of June to September. Once a week, it's not that bad. We do it anyway, me and, me and a bunch of people, but I think if you're gonna adopt a beach and you're going to take on that responsibility, you're certainly gonna have enough to pick up once a week. Why not do it? Mm -hmm. Five times a week just seems like you're just making, making the position available to say so. You're really not doing much. You're not effective. Five times a year. Five times a year. You're not effective. You're not, not effective at all. Um, so I thought 26 times a year. And what that came out to was 18, 18 times between June and September. That's once a week. That's 18 weeks once a week. And then from fall, winter, and spring between October and May, a total of eight times. Um, I, I believe that's once a month at that point when it's not really necessary or, or it's not so bad. And it equals 26 times a, a year. I think that's much more reasonable. It gives a little bit of validity to the program. They're actually really kind of... Uh, Body of work. They're yeah, yeah, it's a good, fair, not over, worked body of work. Mm -hmm. And I think somebody who really wants to take on that responsibility, if they can do the 26 times a year and not expect to have all the bells and whistles um, for doing so, I think this program is kind of neat. It is. I'm wondering if maybe we could involve the high school students for community <coughs> service where they could be credited. And maybe reach out to the Lots of opportunities schools? with it. Yeah, a absolutely. But I've just made a couple small changes to this document that really, if they're made, I would like, after the changes were made, if we can just pass it, pass it around for people to review and just kind of let's get this thing rolling. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know if we even have people signed up yet. We did, we did. did they? Oh, well, good. see, um, you know, that's a great start. That's a great organization to be doing something like this. I just think there's a lot of good opportunity and uh, I like that it's, that it can be done to our beaches, and yet uh, on a on a low on a low visibility scale. Mm -hmm. A lot of work done on a low visibility scale, and I think it'll fit in great with all the other volunteers that are out there doing the same thing, mm -hmm. yeah. um, just because. Yeah. And and it kind of fits in. I think it's a great idea, and because we represent the waterways, it garbage affects the waterways, yeah. so it's a tie-in. It's a natural tie-in. I think it's great. So if I can just make the make, make a few corrections to this packet, make copies, and next time, or maybe get it over. around to us so we can review it in the that, next meeting. We oh, that would be wonderful. That'd be great. And that's it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Del, I'll be happy to take a look at it as well, of course. And, and just if I may lend my quick two cents on that great. as well. Um, going back to the cans off the beaches, growing up on these beaches, learn how to surf, fish, swim. Since I, before I can remember, East Hampton lifeguard, everything like I couldn't agree with you more. 
The notion well, that you'd clean up your garbage and you could bring it over to the trash can on the beach but not off yeah. the beach is, is insane. And well, I'd be willing to help you out any way I can. What, one legal quick side. point to add is we're, we're trying to slowly introduce the carry in, carry out <laughs> concept. That would be awesome. And, and I know the town is making a few steps by putting signs up, carry in, carry out in areas that aren't heavy flow but have cans even there yet. Because we're trying to just introduce it uh, the, the the theory of it. Um, um, it's like bringing around shopping bags. Yeah, I mean, in other areas that Starting are high but, recreation but areas, people do that by nature. Right. Like you wouldn't consider leaving your but, garbage but trying in the somewhere. But trying to introduce yeah. that, that carry and carry out, and at the same time, someone else is throwing garbage cans where you sit on the beach because they, they, they don't want to make you have to walk to the garbage can that's up in the... Uh, 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 up uh, on the parking lot, you know, it's kind of like saying one thing and then doing the other. Kind of confuses people, and it amazes me how confused people get when it comes to garbage now. You know, where they'll <laughs> stick a, a, a pl they'll stick uh, garbage in a recycling thing that says plastic only, and they where it says uh, when the can is full take it home, yet they cover it with a bag of garbage. It just amazes me how this confuses people. I feel like we're already overthinking it. It's the most simple it's concept. So the simple. garbage comes off the beach. Like, that's yeah, it. It, <laughs> so it. It is. I'd be happy to help out over it. All right, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Many years ago, I was on the Nature Preserve Committee, and George Larson, who was the former superintendent of the state park, was the chairman. He told the story that at the state park, they had garbage cans on the beach and they were having problems with the gulls ripping them up at night. So they took them off the beach and it was much cleaner. Good to know. Yeah. Much better yeah. experience with no cans at all on the beach. Yeah. So. The problem with the village, even though it's our beach, they think it's their beach. Yeah, but you know, in the village's defense, the village has done a very good job yeah. of taking care of our they beach. Do. Yeah, they, they do. They do. Right? Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Yeah, maybe there's some communication opportunities there with some of the members of yes. the village. I know last time this was brought up at the trustee board level, before I was on the board, but I, I was at some of the meetings, there was some concerns raised by members of the Village Department of Public Works that there wasn't good communication with them about this discussion. Mm -hmm. So I would just suggest that reaching out ahead Abs of time this would be a good good move, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I want problem. to approach it yeah. fresh. The problem is not during the daytime. The problem is at night when Absolutely. they're on the beach and people keep using it. Yeah. And, you know, um, Newt is gone. Mott, you know, does a great job. He's mm -hmm. home. I mean, the guy's got to go home at some point. Yeah. And yeah. kids yeah. kick kids kick him over. Seagulls and all the things. you see. I've seen it. So uh, I think they belong in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I felt that way two years ago, and I feel that way well, now. How did they approach it last time? They took a vote and went down and demanded this be done. Well, what if we put together a committee? Yeah, yeah I think I was, I was with, witness, with the board. There. I was witness to the way this was handled the last time, and quite frankly, I thought it was really rude of the trustees the approach they took to the village, because. That was you one know, person, Jim. Okay, that was village, not the board. I know, the village. Had, the <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. <laughs> I, I agree. Did I didn't. Good job, <coughs> and they still do a good job. So I, I'm I not. I think if we have it, put two or three people mm -hmm. together, we'll we'll see if we can have New come in and Becky and uh, Eddie McDonald. Yeah, and, and and see if we can and maybe work see if we can get into it slowly. You know, do a beach or two pilot, as an yeah. experiment, so you don't hit mm -hmm. them all with right. Uh, right. It's a great place. project. Right. Great endeavor. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Cool. Terrific. Okay. Uh, not pig lazy point. A letter from Steve Grimaldi. Mm -hmm. Resale of T, t Courier's house. Yep. Courier's New York. Okay. You guys have a chance to review this? No, I have not. Okay. Chris, have you seen any of this? This is the first I've seen it. Okay. Arlene, did you find everything to be in order? Yes, everything's in order. Um, we the purchaser already lives in Lazy Point. He's going to sell his house to buy this one. And um, they have to have a public notice period. So um, they just wanted to get a feeling from the board if they should begin to public notice. Um, we, you know, uh, we have a, everything seems to be in order. Yes. 
Aren't we usually notified of a sale price? I don't see that. I don't think they've Is that sold a requirement? It yet. I don't know that they've sold it yet. Uh, I believe there's a contract also. We have a letter uh, from the one attorney and a letter from the other attorney. I thought we were looking to get a contract that showed the sale price. I think we yeah. have it now. I think we, you have, we it? have it now. 1.6 million or something. I, I have no idea. From the other attorney, Osborne, is it? Yeah. Osborne. Do you need the sale price? <coughs> Well, I think the idea is since there's a transfer fee involved for the right. trustees. It should. Oh, okay, because I have access to. Well, no, that, no, that, that's okay. The, the, the seller and seller needs to supply us with that information. I believe that we have we have the stuff for the affidavit of domicile, and from Osborne, we should have the contract. I don't have anything from Osborne. I just have the uh, I just have the letter from Steve Grimaldi. Okay, so we're going to table this. Yeah, can we try and dig up the contract yeah. already? Yeah. Great, thank you. I didn't remember seeing anything from Steve. Okay, letter from uh, I Vincent Friari requesting placement of five yard dumpster on lots 29N and 30N at Lazy Point. Now, I have a question regarding this. Yeah. What I don't understand is if the gentleman has some work going on on his property and he needs a dumpster, why does he have to wait until we have our next meeting? I mean, he's not going to put the stuff in his pockets. <laughs> you know? I mean, he needs a dumpster. I don't understand. No, say okay. I think, can yeah. I tell you what, I think some of the, this is, this is one of the things we've had some discussion in the past about some of the rules and regulations for Lazy Point, and they, they, they are, there's some big holes there, okay? One is it limits the size of the dumpster. Why do we have the size of the dumpster? Because apparently at one time, somebody was using too big of dumpsters and they were blocking the road. I think simple rules here, that if work is being done or if you have a, a skip or a dumpster delivered to your house, that it is behooves you to keep it out of the road so that emergency vehicles and your neighbors can get past it. I, I don't really see why somebody has to come back to us every time they're asking to put a dumpster at their house. Mm -hmm. uh, Certainly a but, five footer would be uh, <coughs> five yard, is it? Five yard or something. I mean, that's you know, small, that's right? Not, well, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like the, it's a little bit longer than this table. So, so I think the is, review of the rules and regs is appropriate yeah, this, we'll this year. Towards that. Okay. Long overdue. So I, I, um, okay I would make a motion that uh, we allow um, our tenant uh, to go ahead and uh, get himself a dumpster. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 All right, applications from Pam Keen, deck extension in addition to roof deck. You guys had a chance to look that one over? I have. Uh, which one do you want? Because we have two separate applications here. Whatever you want. Well, in the order consecu uh, consecutive First order, the uh, addition of the roof deck would be an addition on this house. There's several other properties down there that have these small roof decks. Mm -hmm. This is not a waterfront property. This is a property that's on the landward side. Um, these are new owners to the house. They would like to sort of do what some of their neighbors have done and put a small um, roof deck on, on, on the house. It does not expand the footprint of the house as it is right now. Uh, what is they, the size of the deck, Jim? Does it specify? Uh, hang Square on, footage? I think it is. I think it is actually specified here. Yeah, that sounds cool. This way you can so look out. the ground deck first? I don't know. Uh, eight by 12 with an, with an access stair. That's the, the size of the extension? No, the that's total? the size of the proposed roof deck. Oh. Is that in front of the house? No, no. Roof, the, roof deck. deck up. On the roof. On top of the deck. On top of the house. Right, over, but will it be the facing oh. the water side? Yeah. No, I gotcha. Uh, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a birdhouse. Like a kukla? Widow's 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 I got it, I got it. <laughs> no, it actually isn't really. It's 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 more towards the back of the house. Okay. Um, it's a low pitch, and it's from what I understood and what they described to me is is it similar to what we see on some of the other properties. And I think they've they've actually supplied a little supporting photo uh, 
of what they think it will look like. I don't know whether anybody had an opportunity to, to look at that. Are those solar no. panels? No. No, that's the roof deck. That's oh. the railing. That's the railing around the roof deck. Here, 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 hand it down. I don't want to I got it. you guys to miss, uh, misinterpret oh, this. Cute. Oh, wow. That's very cute. What, are they, what is the building permit? Actually, it looks strong. Yeah, ugly. That's but what I, it's functional. Uh, they require a hey, they place to hang out. Yeah, put your beach somebody. chair up there. You enjoy the um, view. Showing the proposed structure. And uh, I don't know whether they would require a set yeah, of plans. Is, this, this is a neighbor's property where they also have one. Yeah, yeah. This, you know, I, when I, they first pitched this idea to me, I'm you like, get out of your friggin' mind. You but um, apparently, <laughs> some other people I'll tell you, have yes. done this and have done it legally. So it'll be subject to getting the appropriate yeah. permits yeah. and so on. Yeah. Right. Now that's. Now I. Th I, I think we got to look at both. You right. know, there's two separate applications here, and I think before we make any decisions, we should actually hear about the second one. The second one reads a little funny because <clears throat> it reads ground level deck extension. All right. And what it really maybe should have been worded quite differently because it sounds like they're making the deck bigger. When in reality, there is a concrete patio that's been there for apparent, looks like a very long time. There is a small entry deck going in and out of the door there right now. And I can understand their point. It's a bit of a trip hazard. The entry deck doesn't give any room to do anything. And really, all they're looking to do is, again, what's been done on several other properties, is overlay that existing concrete patio with deck at the same level as their existing. Uh, so it's not existing. really expanding the patio. It's not really it's expanding it at all. In place with new material. Yeah. Because right. yeah. yeah. I, I like to know, it says that you can topple over. If yeah. <coughs> Here's like the survey. If anybody wants to look at it, there's a survey showing the concrete patio. On the next page is a is is a proposed that the uh, the proposed deck is in the same uh, is in the same location. I just have a question what about uh, specifically yeah. for the roof deck. Do we ask the neighbors how they feel about it? I mean, that no, one. no, I don't know that we do that. That would come in in, in in that would come into play if this goes to a ZBA hearing. That's typically how those things. George, you live in the neighborhood. This is the closest we're going to get to that. George, what do you think of this? I think my father put that concrete patio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but let's let's back it up just a little bit. How about the roof deck? I don't see a big deal. Okay. It just gives them an observation We've, deck. I'd like to make it make sure exactly. that we put in the record that the mayor of Nappy <laughs> um, <laughs> Lazy Point has gone on the record that he doesn't see this as a big deal. Well, it's not it's not increasing the pyramid. It's all. not it's increasing not. the the, the yeah, footprint nice. here at all. It's only six feet off the floor, you know, higher view. And it's it's still lower than the highest peak. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a safety so. issue as far as I'm concerned. So do you think? So they don't fall on the board. Well, they actually show a railing there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it says that a chair, if it gets, if you Here's push back, it falls into the, into the. Uh, this is. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We're we're talking about the patio. I, oh, I thought sorry. it was honestly. I thought it was a good idea. It's a lovely patio, George, but it's getting a little tired. It's got a little age to it. Yeah. So does, do, we, do we feel like we yeah, should I make have a enough motion information to, yeah. here to weigh in on this here tonight? Can I make a motion subject to getting the appropriate building permits and, uh, you know, approvals All right. for these that. two projects? All right. And now we're talking about both applications. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's correct. Yes. All right. Well, um, do I have a second? We do. Uh, yes, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Old business. Um, I, ha I have. I, I have intentions to speak to everybody individually and not have a open debate at this point about the special permits, um, special events permit procedures. So. I would like to table that. Um, proposal from Dr. Gobler, conti uh, continued water quality assessment of trustee waters. Has everybody had a chance to review that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comments? 
Um, I, I would like to just comment that, you know, he, I think he does excellent work for us, but, you know, over the past three years, I think we've seen almost a 20% increase per year to the cost, and it's gone from a, you know, $30,000 a year commitment to now a $60,000 a year commitment. Mm. Yeah, but and the scope of his work has increased as well. It, it has. At our request. In, in yeah. fairness, it has, yeah. you know, but I just think going forward, we, we need to either look for some additional sources of funding for this area if it is going to continue Didn't to grow. Didn't we mention CPF funding? I think, Francis, you did, or one yeah. of us. So I, I, I don't see why week. we can't apply. It is water quality. We allotted 20%. Absolutely. We voted on it. So, so that's a great point. Funding. So is, you know, is, there, is there a committee that would like to take on maybe pursuing uh, applying for some CPF funding for this year? A, a member or a, you know one of the yeah. our committees. I I've never applied for anything, but I'd be happy to work with someone to learn there, how. There's to. a committee Can that we work meets. With Nicole on that? Can we work well, with the, there's a, a committee, a uh, uh, committee that you would CPF present your committee. projects to, and they would approve or disapprove of it. And so, can you? I, I think they, can you apply after the fact? I mean, can we approve well, this? Well, it, even if we, for even the worst case, it would be for next for year. next year, yeah. But I think we should get the ball rolling. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's important. It's a mm -hmm. great program, but it is you know something that is getting to be yeah. broader and, and a little bit. What more I can never understand is, and I'm not being facetious, how do we can pay this to Dr. Gobler when we pay our taxes to Stony Brook University? It's almost like a double hit. I realize he does great work, but we're not a cash cow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, you want to make well, that I, phone I, call? I just, <laughs> I, I, I wonder if we should get a uh, sort of an itemized budget on this. Uh, we kind of do. We yeah, that's that. not we it. We went through that last yeah. year. And you know what? This represents real time with real people and I think significant overhead. Um, yeah, I don't know the significant overhead. Mm. Yeah. Given the Wayne Scott uh, situation, I think that we need to f continue to focus yeah. on cleaning no, think, up our water bodies. Oh, absolutely. And important. Go to CPF fund. So yeah. I That's think, the most important thing. And I think to a certain extent, some of his work is beginning to bear fruit at this point yeah. because we're using some of that baseline data mm -hmm. as a means to um, validate some of our, our, our requests. For assumptions. For That's a very good point. For permits, and we're going to be relying more heavily on that in the future. So I don't think we should, certainly I don't think we should stop. I think Rick's idea of, of, of trying to uh, get Supplement. some supplemental funding from the CPF would be good. And it's, and, and it's really in our whole town's interest. Because as an example, we do have test data for fecal coliform down there at Fresh Pond, okay, it's intuitively clear that it's probably coming from our town-owned bathrooms. Mm. And you know what? We're going to want to, we're going to, we're going to need and want to deal with that. And as part of the permitting process here, um, um, that data that we've been accumulating is going to be used to procure the permits and in all likelihood I could see where the town does the same thing that we're looking to do goes back to the CPF fund and says you know this bathroom project is really a water quality project here because look at this dream you know we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to fix something that we we may or may not have broken here so eh. I, th I think that's a great idea. It startled me with that statement. No. Okay. okay, great. So, did, Jim, do you want to work on this? I can, yeah, capacity? I'd like to work on it. Is this something, okay. but I'm going to just tell you yeah, something. This ain't right. something I'm working on this month or probably next month. It's going to be a little while. Okay. So, so that works. you're saying if you work on it, the goal is for next season? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it any, everybody comfortable? Yeah. With that? Yes. Anybody wish to work with Jim on it? I'd like to learn. Would you like to that work with me? Question. I will work with you. Would you like to work with me? You have an me? issue with working with me? No, I said, would you like to work with going. me? <laughs> See how I reverse psychology here? Yeah. I'm always ready to learn and to help. It's been a long day, and I'm, I'm, I'm challenging to go out and okay. count some horseshoe so. crabs. I know, I'm going out too. 
You guys right? sleep on it. And yeah, we're going let out me know in the morning. <laughs> I have my boots and my raincoat and the whole nine yards. All right. ZBA public hearing application for Rosenwald at 100 Runnymede Drive. I'm going to be very short and say it has been postponed for the second time, okay. and that will be um, June. Where's Rosenwald? There we go. I went in today to check on this. So I think I skipped one. Yeah, I skipped two, yeah. but who's count? Yeah. No, we, actually, we did these earlier. Yeah, didn't we? The first three we did. No, well, I didn't talk about yeah, oh. Runnymede. We did the first three, but this one is Runnymede, Rosenwald. Mm -hmm. It's been postponed to June 26th. Okay. And I'll just go down the line. Connolly, still outstanding because we're waiting. Um, I saw Katie today at the ZBA office, and she is uh, the agent, and we're waiting for Brian Frank and group to issue a, um, the final permit for the big vegetation, I guess, and then... Uh, for Maislin, for the stone armor revetment. I had some pictures, and thank you very much for printing them out for me, um, Arlene. Uh, this has also been postponed, tabled uh, until June 19th. And these are pictures of this, and I spoke to Jim about it because he was Which familiar. Which one is this? M-A-S-L-I-N. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So I took some pictures of it, and um, in my opinion, um, I think that it would be behoove us to allow this person to, although it has been denied, but when I actually physically went here, there's a huge body of the land that has been torn away. She wants to reestablish her revetment. And um, I think if you look at the pictures, you'll see um, all along the coastline, there's no beach. Um, I can, you can take a peek at those. I'm, I'm concerned that yeah, um, eventually, she's going to need we'll to have something yep. done to Thank preserve you. and for her neighbors. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. There is a funny picture here. I was taking a picture of the grasses <laughs> and I thought nice. it was a statue because it didn't move. And it stood here and stood here and the moment I started to take a picture, it leapt out. But I was there for about <laughs> 10 minutes. It just, so it's in my, my uh You have picture. a lot of fun, don't you? I when do. You go <laughs> okay, so this. So this is Maslin, which is, has been um, That's the postponed. That's the Maslin that I did the research on when we first got the yes. permit in, that they had applied twice before for a uh, permit. But that was a few years a ago. Rock revetment. And then this is recent. And this damage. They have a rock revetment. Right. This is the. Yeah, the but they want to the add revetment? to it. Is this the one? Yeah, they want to add to it. Mm -hmm. And we had just approved them, and the DEC had just approved them to do the soft approach with the sand placement and behind. Behind, and the and the vegetation. Now, there, there are bulkheads on either side mm -hmm. of this, yes. right? Yes, and are, to the left they of the it, same all height? the way down. Well, actually, the one to the east is, is a bit higher. In fact, okay. quite a bit higher. The one to the west, hang on. There's one it's to the west with grass planted. Yeah, but wait, mm -hmm. that's a little farther to the west. Yes. Yeah. There's a couple of properties there yeah, with, the, yeah, you know. with the lower bulkhead, with the lawn right down to the... Yeah. And I mean, you know, the, the issue, I, I happen to have been to this property. The issue I see, they were they were told by the town to try the soft approach, and you can see the remains of some of the mm -hmm. soft approach here. Mm -hmm. The only thing with the soft approach is this. The waves may not directly breach this thing, but they lip over it. Mm -hmm. They draw the soil and material back as they come away. And you know what? I don't know. If I was if I owned the property and somebody said to me, I'll tell you what. You know what you do? Before we give you a permit to raise your stone revetment, we want to see you try this, okay? And trying this is 15 or 20 grand, okay? And then if that doesn't work, you all come back to us. Well, I feel like having asking somebody to spend a significant amount of money to try something when intuitively you kind of know it's it's not going to quite work. Um, you know, if you raised it up, it would be con it would compare to the bulkheaded property immediately to the east, and you have them do the revegetation. And you know what? To me, then it becomes an investment 
as opposed to basically just dumping ten or twenty thousand dollars out the window of your car. That was our discussion, and yeah. when you see it, you went there as well, right? When I saw that that soft um, approach, and then it had been torn away again, it's yeah, digging but I, I deeper just, in. Yeah, and it is, so, and you know, I think what did happen. I did look into the history of this property one time. They, they didn't quite complete the soft approach. Oh. And I think what it was is they were a little bit dispirited by the fact that as soon as they were doing it, they could see their investment being lost. Mm -hmm. So they backed out of finish it, which I don't, honestly, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't blame the people. Mm -hmm. The description on the zoning board uh, the evening that I was going to go and Susan couldn't come and then, I don't know why, I, it was postponed. It says to enlarge and possibly reset the stone armor of an existing rock revetment on a parcel of land containing coastal bluffs, beaches, and tidal surface waters. The neighbors all the way to the right have done the new grass planting. The neighbors just to the left of them, it was astounding. They have stairs and there's no beach. There's nothing left at all. So um, I, I tend to agree with your view that it, it's well, going to be. Well, that's the one with the high with the high bulkhead. Yeah, but you know, but, guys, I keep, mean, the, the bulkheads keep, and keep in mind no here. Beach. I don't think you can look at these bulkheads and say the bulkhead's the reason there's no beach there. That particular spot, as you go to the east, they're all like that. You know, when you start to go to the west there, mm -hmm. the erosion situation is a little less. Yes. You can use a soft approach and it and, and, and it and it and it has and it it has worked. I don't know. I, uh, well if you look closely at one of the house? photographs with the grass, mm -hmm. there is some sort of barrier at the bottom, but the, the sand has come up to it so that the top only is showing. So it's showing this shoaling, I guess. And then the property all the way to the this left where there's nothing. Actually, we shoveled no. that same. It seems that I didn't walk past that, but it, does it go there, around a no. little bend? This is. It was just stairs. That was it. There was nothing else. But this is not <laughs> this. But the hearing isn't until end of June anyway. No. So. Okay. This is probably not. Okay. Where is this? Where it's is this two house? house it's two that houses is to, to, the, the west. to the west. To the west. So one side has a bulkhead, one side has rocks on this side. Next to that house, uh, there's bulkheading yeah. going yeah. east. This property is then there's on either side. Maislin. Yeah. Then there is the um, stairway only with bulkheading, and um, yes, he passed here is where the bulkheading starts. Right. And, and if you look and at the bottom, there's no beach at all. Yeah, look What's at the bottom of that one. House? Well, that was that was done just last year. Yeah, that's brand new. What the happened, actually, planted. you know what happened is that house actually held up better than we thought. What happened to that this year is you had that big heave of ice in the middle of January. The ice came in and busted up some of those core locks and actually <coughs> started to push them up the, up the bank. So those were reset this spring. Yeah. Do you see the bottom of the tip of the fencing showing it? That it's all under sand. Okay, to be continued. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we have to backtrack. We never made a motion to approve Dr. Gober's um, proposal. I'd like to make a motion to approve his proposal. I'll second. All in favor? I'll abstain. Okay. Aye. You will wait till the phone call? <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, Jim. Okay. Anybody I don't know else? yet. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. I, I need a show of hands because I can't okay. hear anyone. Right. One, two, there? three, four, five. Six. Okay, we're good. All right. Ryan, did you abstain? I did. Okay. <laughs> I right. to Agriculture. Like you, you know what? Can we do something? Because it keeps coming up. This is Roads Committee, I believe. All right. Has to do with. 174 Cranberry Hall. 74. 174. I have 174. Well, this says 174. No, 74 Cranberry Hall. Okay, that's a typo. Right. Well, are, these, are these example letters that Chris prepared? Yeah. yeah. Are we supposed to address these tonight? No, I think we should no. table 74. We spoke with our last meeting about uh, sending a, a specific letter or at least making contact with the okay. owners at 74, so that's what we're going to do on that. So, mm -hmm. uh, the draft letters are, are more of a, a correspondence to the town board, um, not the town board, I'm sorry, the billing department. 
and the zoning board and the planning board. So let's table 74. I plan on reaching out both by letter and phone okay. to the owners and getting something started. And then there's these other two. Yeah, everyone should look at these letters, and if they have any comments, please share with us. But we do want to communicate with other government agencies within the community of East Hampton to let them know that their decisions are having impacts on trustee matters and on the public. So that is the purpose to you know try to help make these uh, projects and access of trustee properties uh, more professional and, and more fair to the, the public so they're not putting a difficult spot down the road, which we're running into in a couple of situations. So we're requesting to be noticed as adjacent property owners. The, the meat of these, of all three of these, is really that we're requesting they update their, their different applications to include a little blurb at the, at the right location in the application that notifies trustees. Almost all of these applications have these little star notes, important, pay specific attention to these certain thing so it shouldn't be a big deal to add in another one at these locations in the application for all three of these uh, entities saying hey take a look at and uh, and include the trustees on these so mm -hmm. um, hopefully the, it'll won't fall in deaf ears and uh, that's just my recommendation to all of you guys and to the board if you guys have any other recommendations as to how to uh, impact these processes I'm, I'm all ears I just sort of took a good stab at it and I think it's a great start but I don't know that it's it's a uh, complete in our uh, recommendations of how to get the trustees uh, more involved in these processes. So yeah. please take a look and I'm, I'm a welcome any and all feedback because it's really okay. just yeah. my idea. Let's table for the next next involved. meeting and, and let's be prepared to, to move forward, all right? So please take a look I, at I think that's a good start though, getting getting that that wording on their applications. Yeah, that's an important Acknowledging stuff. the trustees is a, is a good start into making people aware that we are adjacent property owners and we you know, we should be, in be considered included. in the process. Considered in, in, in the process. And totally agree. Okay, one more point on roads. Um, you know, Chris received a uh, communication from Mr. Lang on Midland Highway, and he's removed the entire deer fence from his property. Wow. And is Excellent. planning to put just a small backyard fence up. So we've created uh, several acres of non-encumbered open space, as well as cleared the access to Midland Highway. So. Thank you to the Roads Committee. Thank you to Chris. It's a good start. Mm -hmm. Our first project this year, and it had a really favorable outcome. And we have a lot more work to do on Midland and other places, but it was just encouraging to see that our efforts were met with a respectful response from a homeowner. So, so thank you, Mr. Lang, for your participation in this and your respect of our board and, and our environment. And the deer thank him, too. <laughs> <laughs> And he's welcomed us back out to his property to review it one last time, yeah. just to confirm. Because originally we had nice. requested he update his survey. I'm going to go ahead and say that's not necessary that he updated if he really just completely removed that encroachment off of right. our property. So as long as we go out there and we see uh, what we like to see, that there's no more fence, I think that would be sufficient uh, from our request. So yeah. we'll, uh, maybe the Roads Committee will make, make a time to go out there. Yeah. yeah. We'll he set a what? nice precedent for the rest of the people <laughs> who have deer fence. Thank you. Great job and congratulations. Right. Yeah. Terrific. The, um, Thank you. The Edwards Hall Road, the two properties that you asked me to get the information on, I have a copy and I gave Chris a copy of the Excellent. permit information and the surveys. Great, great. So yeah, we do have we, some revegetation work going on in Edwards Hall Road, and I think we have a little more homework to do, but at the next meeting I think we'll provide a, a, an update on that. Yeah. But we're, we're making progress. Yeah. We, we can go over that. To make sure we're doing point. native plantings and so on, and we're going to confer with Jim, I think, on this one too a little bit. So tabled until the next time. Okay. Um, aquaculture, Aquabonic Harbor Mosquito Larvae Survey. Well, I'm happy to announce with John that we have selected our five um, people to work with us on this from the list that originated as a volunteer list and now we voted to compensate. One of the um, people who has volunteered would prefer instead of compensation to receive a document from uh, us for credit for school or a community. Internship. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that would not be a problem. And um, then we have a backup person who said he would be willing to come along. And he never expected to be compensated at all. He'd be delighted to be a backup person. He's in the aquaculture hatchery class with me. That's how I met him. So we're all set to go. John has reached out uh, to Nicole, to um, Kevin and to Tom, and we're waiting for them to give us a, a de definitive schedule and the instructional 
day of, of class, you're coming as long, along as well, right, Jim? You're going to get in touch with me. Yes. Okay. I'm going to call you rather yes, than email. But so, John, pick up from. Um, well, there's some tentative times that have been suggested, but there's going to have to be some communication back and forth about what's practical. I think we're going to have a, 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 a training for the actual sampling itself, and then I've requested that we have a separate GPS. training maybe for GPS and coord how that coordinates with the iPhones and how the data is entered and transmitted. So uh, there's different people saying, making different suggestions, so we're just going to have to come to some kind of a consensus on whether this is two separate training sessions or one combined training session and when that'll be. But it'll have to be within the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, so we're, we're on hold, but we've made progress. It's been a, a coordination of three agencies and the people who are going to be working with us who have Yeah, we got to get, get this thing started, right? We're, yeah, we so have our people. Push forward. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this the, uh, the yeah, is the This is my list. Because, of there's water, five, water, water, water. because there's five Mondays in July, the suggestion now is to start uh, later in June, so not okay. necessarily the 1st of June. The okay. suggestion now is to start the 11th All right. and then run it 10 weeks from there. So okay. we have Sounds about good. a month before we have Ramp to up. actually start. Yeah. Okay. We're ready. We'll stay with you on uh, Oyster Pond. Transfer. Oyster Pond, yes. I spoke to some a woman from the permits office and the regional state parks office a couple of weeks ago, and she was finalizing the permit, and then I went to California, came back, and there was no permit. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I haven't been able to get in touch with her Friday or today, so um, I'm expecting and he's just at. a hold up and, you know, just a, just a whatever you call it. <laughs> she fell through the cracks, and we'll get it shortly. Farley's prepared to go this week or next week. If you go on a Monday or Tuesday, give me a shout. I'd love to join you. Okay. I would like to go as well. Yeah. All right. Um, Rysom Fund? Brian, Brian just uh, left. Um, and John Marshall <laughs> Outreach? John Marshall, I am pr pleased to say we are going on Wednesday. Barley, um, Brian, and myself, and we are, will be there at 9 a.m. in the morning. So we finally got that down, and we're sure. excited. So we will be addressing the first graders, the second graders, and the fifth graders in the auditorium. It's a 40-minute, 45-minute <coughs> program, and I'm going to do a little art with ballooning, and debris, and marine life, and how we need to take care of our marine life. That's my input, and of course, Brian will talk about the trustees and what, what we all do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has some experience in doing these programs from previous. Yes. Visits and I think schools. Barley is going to send a Ashley from the hatchery. So, um, yeah. So we were talking about the educational program. Right. 9 a.m. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. No, yeah. I don't know if you're supposed to announce the name of them. Oh. I don't think mm -hmm. so. No. Oh. So just be no, careful. Until, you can talk about it. And not until we, the end of the month. We have selected. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Select okay. No, I'm glad you yeah. told me. Because yeah. I definitely would have said something. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that's just the way I am. So, so yep. selected a winner, right? Huh? We can talk about having selected a winner. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> It's exciting, you know, so the person did a great job. Um, you know, sometimes people, and it bothers me a little bit, you know, kids have to be a little more creative. Not so much this time. This time it's pretty good, but in years past, you know, a couple of lines. But this person really put a lot of work into it, pictures and what it means to, you know, to be in this special place, East Hampton. And it was really nice, and uh, it was reflected on the number of people that voted for this person. So, good job. You know who you are. 
<laughs> I would like to make a comment about that. I totally agree. I think I probably, um, you know, was very impressed by all of the applicants. I think every one of them. I, I will admit here that I started crying, and Darlene will attest to that. And um, I, I really. Too, Brian. <laughs> no, they were just beautifully written and in earnest, and every one of the students, I thought, had something of a terrific value to offer and was um, very sincere about their studies and wishes to continue on in, in their um, academic endeavor. And I'm going to make a suggestion that maybe we can discuss this, but because we, have, we had six applicants, I believe, right? It was six? Yes. I'm wondering if perhaps not everyone should deserve something because it is a small body that applied and if we could think about maybe giving each one of the students who applied, but they did put a lot of work into it and I'm wondering if the Rysom Fund might you have know, something I'm, to give to... I'm, I'm going to make a comment on that right now. You know, we've been trying to grow the Rysom Fund. Mm -hmm. It's depleting on, every, on everything that we do. And I'm going to be honest, I, you know, I had kids that apply, you know, my own kids that applied to these things. And they didn't, and sometimes they got a grant, sometimes they got a scholarship, and a lot of times they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is like T-ball where you should necessarily like get a, a participation trophy, mm -hmm. okay? The kids are entering a competitive world. Mm -hmm. If they, if they're serious about their studies, if they're serious about this, the, this Rysom fund or any scholarship they're applying to, they're going to recognize that, you know, they got to put the effort in, and you can't get a little trophy. Excuse me, a Charlie horse. You can't get a trophy for, you know, just showing up. You know, I, I think it's, it's, it, it, to, to a certain degree, it, it, it sort of devalues the academic quality here when you start to do that. I, I, I think we should always be, be striving for the, for the best and promoting that with our kids. And we, and we chose, I think, yeah. I believe that we chose the best candidate mm -hmm. um, for this. And that's this. great. And I'm, I just wanted to put that out there for the other kids that they, they did very, um, they each touched me. And every one of them, I believe, needs some help to go to school, which is why they entered it. So it's just a thought. I mm -hmm. thought I would bring it up. Could write a personalized letter to the others. You know, that's a just good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's acknowledging better. the specifics of their application. Mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. That's they, a very they good all idea. Did put a lot of effort into it. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Right, to be continued. All right. Uh, I think we did the Georgia Association, right? <coughs> Mighty control. Um, Harbor Management Horseshoe Crab Survey. Uh, we went a week or so ago. Uh, Susan, Dell, and I went to get trained uh, on how to count one, two, three uh, the horseshoe crabs. But it was it was it was informative, and we're actually implementing it starting this evening. We're going out on uh, the beginning of the new moon here to, to do our first counts. Tonight, for me, is going to be a scouting operation. I did go out today and, and scouted the east side in that peak harbor. And even in the daylight, you can see where the, where the crabs have been breeding. You can see they clearly see their tracks. You can e e even clearly see some predation on the nests and stuff already. And it was kind of nice because uh, the, where they're breeding isn't quite where they described the other day. They're not breeding at the highest point on the tide. They're, they're breeding somewhere a little less than that. But uh, I'm looking forward to going out tonight after this and doing a little scouting on the west side. And hopefully tomorrow night we I start doing counts in earnest. What's the location again? We're what doing, are, Del and I are doing Napeak Harbor. We're um, doing Rick northwest. and Susan are doing northwest. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I had a conversation with Matt Sclafani from um, from Cornell on Friday, and he's really hoping that perhaps next year we could add a couple additional sites, such as Akabonic out here, you know, that they know there are, there is breeding going on there, but they would like to add some other sites if possible. That would be great. Interesting. More people. Yeah. What's, What's the, the good, good start? Do you happen upon them when they're breeding? Uh, Interrupt? 
Well, you know, I got to tell you, I, I, I think you're not supposed to. No, no, no. Our, we're just, we're just really counting. Yeah, more of observation. The right next now. moon. Not tagging them while they're the, no, the next no. moon we're going to go out and tag as well. That's yeah. the 24th, I think. Yeah. June? You know the ones it's, it's, that are. You're coming along. Yeah, no, the right. ones that are done are smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, we're going to bring some of those kids that That's we like met in the on old Sundays. Movies. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy. That was they could stay up all night. Yeah, we're bringing our old man Jesus with us. Oh my God! All right. Uh, so I just have a question. We got a letter is, this from is the Jim yeah. asking about. That's the tag. It's huge. Restricting yeah. beach driving. Well, we did, we but this is. Thing. But you know what? This is. You know, this this is what was generated. Well, that was my Tom That was my. His fault. visit oh, Tom. is to. Yeah. Um, is to is to basically you got to start something. We can't arbitrarily just say, "Oh no, you can't drive on the beach here anymore." We have to. We're going to locate these yeah. areas where they're breeding, come up with some proposed protocols, bring some of the baymen into it, bring some of the members of CFAR into this okay. discussion, and see if we can get some voluntary uh, closures of areas. And yeah, that specifically was that was when, my understanding. Yeah, yeah. when that's going to yeah. happen. Gonna do. Yeah, we're a little bit away from that yet. Yeah. And how do you tell them about from the females? The female is large. The females She's the largest are much larger. Mm -hmm. But the males have got the males, they, the males go around the claw. Attaching. The males have like that deer in the headlight look. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell me to stop. Jim. No, that would be the female. Stop. That would be the female. Right. The, the, female. No. What's the male. Going on? Yes. <laughs> yes, honey. <laughs> All right. Um, Harbor management review. Deep water winds, yeah. South Fork Community Benefits Pack. Yeah. yeah, and I was wondering if we should uh, consider scheduling a special meeting maybe for next week. Yeah, I think following we up uh, after the public hearing. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yes. You know, maybe at the trustee office. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Monday you know, night. Monday night. <laughs> read my mind, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Tuesday night. Tuesday's, so. Tuesday's fine. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, Tuesday I can't. Night. Monday night's you fire. fire house. Okay. okay. Tuesday night. How does works. Tuesday work for everyone? Tuesday's I think it's okay. I'll check my my calendar at home. I, they weren't. You have no I think time. <laughs> what? Should us, that'd be all right. Tuesday's good for you. Shoot us an email. Yeah. To yeah. That yeah. Like we'll you're not. To, uh, no, put out a notice. And, okay, yeah. I'm trying to learn. You know, I'm, I am learning. Next, I'm not trying. Tentatively you guys next right Tuesday. Tuesday. John, Susan. I, I cannot. I'm working right. afternoon shifts next week. Please, you. Hey, I'm you know what? I'm having a good time Monday learning and helping. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, so next right. Monday night, six six o'clock. Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday now. Six o'clock. No. Friday's not good. For you. No. No. no we fire school. Fire school. Complete that years ago. No, we have it every month. Oh, really? It's a refresher. Is it? What no. drill? No. no, no. So there's no way to switch a night. No way. Yeah. No, yeah. No. I'm sorry. Any way to switch a night? I can try. Okay. I can try. Can All we right. tentatively plan on Tuesday and then? Tuesday, we'll see. six o'clock. At the Harbor Management Building. Okay. Right. Does anybody want food? Where's the Harbor Management the Building? The trustee office. 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 No. Oh, the land his, building. His the trustee building. office. No, it's the Harbor trustee office. And his it's the trustee building. office. It's their trustee office. office. <laughs> That's all right. It's not all right. Getting I'll be looking for that place. <laughs> yeah. right, so it's, right. it's a magical That's place. It's where you put your Brian. truck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. You know, wherever the and the place that you tell me you sleep sometimes. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> You're <laughs> dead meat. <laughs> got some material. You are so under you the bus. You told me if I heard snoring, it, it, it would be The purpose is to <laughs> debate this amongst ourselves, correct? Yes. I yes. think we need to have so, a... So we're not talking here. executive session. We're just having a meeting. Well, yeah. no, it is, it is a discussion about the lease, so it may fall under executive session. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we're going to need your opinion on that. If you want to sleep on it. Before we notice it, so yeah. it's noticed properly. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, Pete, oh, may I just yep. add one point to that? Sure. Is everyone okay with my posting the latest information on the community benefits and lease information to the website so the public can have access to I it? I think it should absolutely yeah. be there. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll try and get it up there tomorrow. Do we need to make a motion? No, no yeah. we're just going to do this, I think, just yeah. as a consensus. Can, for okay. clar my no clarification, motion. again, I'm <coughs> assuming that's suggested language proposed by them yes that's what's well, the latest proposed language okay. that we have received I think that from should them. just be 
clear in the posting that this is not any kind this of This is not a final. finished product. Yeah. Right. 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 It's not a final. final. Right. Thank you, John. That's a good point. All right. Nat P. Glazy Point. Request from M. Batkin to replace the camper on lot 19N during July and August for her daughter to use as a bedroom and to have chickens in an enclosed mesh discussed this on the last property. Time? Yeah. 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 It was it was brought up. I don't know. We talked about it. Don't you, voted on. I don't think don't you go to see the point for that? It. No, we didn't vote on that. I'm not sure. in favor of that. Yeah. We, 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 we spoke about it. No, we spoke about it. Right. We spoke about it. I don't know. I'd like to hear from other I'd like to hear from other members about what their feelings are on it. You want to go around the table? Yes. I'll start. I uh, honestly, I I think the folks in, in Lazy Point have a way of doing doing things that have been going smoothly for a period of time that I know of. Um, I don't know enough about the goings on down there to to know whether this sounds. Um, uh, funny or just kind of normal business. It seems my my instinct is telling me that it's not that big of a deal, and it's probably goes on has been going on year after year or longer. Um, I don't know. Let, let me just interject. And this might help you. The fire marshal and I were looking at a similar application in East Hampton, and he had mentioned to me, not verbatim, because it was a while ago that that's not acceptable. And so they, in the, the law may already be on the books is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. I, well, I believe right now the town code does not allow, does not allow that. I mean, yeah. you know, I'd like to say, hey, you know, it's kind of great. I understand, I understand the need. I find it difficult to sure. believe that you're gonna, that you're gonna put a camper at your house and not hook your bathroom up to your septic system, which probably would be the best thing to do but the hard reality is you're in an area with small properties okay pretty close proximity between houses I have no idea what the neighbors feel about this but you know to me I know the town's trying to help people out with like uh, accessory, you know, lodging and things like this. But the fact of the matter is, this is a pretty tight area. I don't really, personally, I don't really feel that adding campers and basically inadvertently adding to your to, to your coverage on the property is really a neighborly thing to do or something that that really works within the within the scheme of the leases and stuff that we have right there. I agree. I think mm -hmm. adding the chickens <laughs> to this application makes it even a little bit more problematic. Well, I love, made me I think love like chickens. Going on. <laughs> but, but, but I don't think there's I, lo so I love strange. chickens, and I've had chickens. And you know what comes yeah, with chickens? chickens? Well, yeah. The smooth, smooth-tailed squirrels come with chickens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, and that's unneighborly as well. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> is, is that, there is no town is, code against chickens. There is. No, no, there is. But you know, and, and you Actually, know what? Actually, my daughter but was trying our, to talk our, me into getting chickens because uh, yeah. my parents had chickens for the longest time. Oh, oh, yeah. they, they were, yeah, we were up, up at the um, Cauliflower Association. Yeah. Oh, let's get a chicken coop and let's get some chicken. You know, me and Papa. Yeah, but no, yeah. about the and, uh, no, actually, I thought about mother taking care of the chickens. Right. And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, they are, they are prone to roaming around the neighborhood. They're going to be. That's okay. Uh, that's as long as they provide eggs. Does anybody else have chicken salad? Yeah. Do we know? The oh, eggs are oh, great. Does anyone else the have fresh chickens? Fresh eggs are great. No. But no. Yeah. no, they go and buy their chickens. Chicken mm. cutlet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but chick to, uh, chickens are tough. We go to, uh, again, uh, it's one of those Mickey's things. It's a, it's, it's a small, pretty close yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. I think we just we just um, discussed the size of the lots too. We have jurisdiction on this. Yeah, unless there's a covenant. Unless there's a covenant. Yeah, I'll say that. Um, Rick, he won't have to. Right? Forget so it. So, are there covenants and restrictions in the area? In, in Lazy Point, that well, would, would be the rules and regulations. No, yeah. They don't own the land, so right. I can't. Uh, from the town, are there any no. covenants no, or restrictions? Can, can have chickens in town. Yeah, yeah. I, wouldn't, well, I wouldn't let a rooster, Okay, chickens, though. but no. Roosters, that could really. I think really they said noisy. they would not have we a rooster. Have to have yeah. at least one yeah. rooster. 
Obviously, it's an economic difficulty no, for this particular no. family that you like don't to need have a daughter for living eggs. nearby for the parents. No, but no, no, you no, you it's an unusual fertilizer. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I, I, you want to, I think it would be an encumbrance. Vote on the camper and table yeah. the chickens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God! So now chickens I, and no camper. I go. I go take with the, the majority. Chickens? I just didn't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, so I, far, far well, off. The lots are so small normal. down there. It's just, it's a little bit of an ask. I, I, I don't see starting a precedent. I mean, yeah. it, it, it appears that the daughter is visiting for the summer and and wants to bring her own apartment. Yeah, it's an, it's, 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 it's an encumbrance it, it, in a way, in a yeah, place, yeah, in the neighborhood. Uh, yeah, it sets a precedent for other it. people right. to do the same. And You're inviting multifamily use. In right. 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 Yeah. And you're so you know, saying you know, it'll be the, the, the point the And I got to I I tell you, from a fire and safety standpoint, mm -hmm. yeah, some of the worst fires you can have mm -hmm. are in a mobile oh, home yeah. or, a, or a trail. Because of gas tanks? Well, no. There's no exit. No, because, Propane? You, because you don't have patent exit, exits, and the heat that gets generated inside yeah, those right. things mm. are incredible. Yeah. I, uh, okay. I just... I don't think it would make good sense. Okay. I wanna, I'd like so to make a motion to deny that. Okay. Second. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 No trailer. All right. Chickens. And no chickens? No. Oh, they do chickens. part and parcel? I think they can have chickens. Oh. Well, so are we voting the on the chickens? It, well, table the chickens? I'd table the chickens. I don't know that we have anything yeah, specific. Table the chickens. Wait, table the chickens? The chickens? Yeah, I don't know if they would the like chickens. that. If anyone knows anybody <laughs> down there, you might want to. Well, <laughs> listen, you're tabling the chickens. She but the, the town chickens. code allows for chickens. <laughs> right, but this is. I'm not saying no, we're tabling it. As landlords, we can. Where are they going to live? In, I thought they were living in. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're saying. No, different structure. Yeah. yeah. We're building this house. Or, or is she yeah, bringing chicken. her chickens with her, and right. since she can't have the camper, maybe. Are they no her chickens? chickens. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> so, this isn't some sort of emotional support. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Maybe they should come and explain the chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they should bring the chickens. Yeah. Yeah, this is no. do a personality no. interview. No. Okay. Well, All right. Moving silly. along. Uh, Pam Keen, we did. No, uh, we didn't. No, this is a this is not a, the same thing. Oh, this uh, is the oh this apparently is the apparently there's a re lot. Okay. there's a request. What happened is this was Chini Alarco's place, and when right. it came time for a CEO, she uses two lots, oh. and the easy fix was to lease her two lots. Mm -hmm. Well, now that the Keens have purchased the property, they want to go back to just leasing one lot. But you know what? The property works over into two lots. Um, I would like to make a motion that we compromise, that we lease a lot and a half. Okay. We are we did doing discuss that this anywhere last time as well. Yeah, we yeah that, okay. is, that is being done on a couple okay. of other properties. And I think that's a fair and equitable way of dealing with it. I would second that. And then you're leaving part of the second lot. Natural. It's, it's, already, it's already unclear. <coughs> They're not going to do anything right. to it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and we discussed that. a little that. space between the next And we discussed there, that. They, we, they, right. they, at the, at our meeting, they were exactly. Should we qualify that nothing else but what's on the half lot be established on the half lot? No accessory mm -hmm. buildings or... Mm -hmm. No, no, no expansion. that's... They no can't. Expansion. The yeah. other half lot remains vacant. Mm -hmm. I would open. Like, I would like to see that, yeah, yeah, that wording, that it remain the way it is. Mm -hmm. no. The half lot that they're going to lease. Not, right. No, no, the half lot that's left. The remaining half lot remaining. Of, yeah, well, of the full they have lot. No rights to it. The half so that they have, they have no rights to it. Right. Yeah. Oh, so they would be able to build on the half lot that, that we're going to lease them. No, I asked them last time. I think it's something. too small to build on it. Right? We already had a restriction that they couldn't do anything when they had two lots. They couldn't do anything on it. Just whatever was on it. So we'll we can continue that. Well, it was just Conditions. to accommodate the existing the existing condition. structures on um, So who I owns have, that I have, a I have a motion yeah. there. Does anybody want to? So nobody it. can store things it. on it? Can we vote yeah. on Vehicles. it? All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 There it One is. and a half. <laughs> One and a half lots. Okay. There she is. Okay, and do we want to start discussing extending the length of leases at least? I asked that this uh, be placed on the agenda because <clears throat> I want to keep it on the front burner and just reiterate uh, what was said last time we met uh, by extending the lease, leases down at Lazy Point. We'll give the 
um, folks down at Lazy Point the opportunity if they should choose to do so, um, they can get a mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking about a 25 or 30 year lease. Um, they can get a substantial uh, home improvement within the confines of the town uh, rules and regs and all rules and regs. Um, I just think that this is a, a really positive thing. I don't want to kick it, I don't want to kick the can down the road forever on this. Uh, I'd ask that my colleagues put some serious thought to this. Uh, obviously, if you have a one year, one year lease or a 30 year lease, uh, we own the land, you still have to abide by the lease. Um, well, <coughs> what, what that's going to trigger sure. is, is a need for probably a more fair, equitable, and comprehensive set of um, set of conditions and stuff in the lease. I mean, it's been attempted in the past, and I think a few years ago when it was attempted, unfortunately, it was attempted by raising raising the annual lease. I think it was 120 percent. 1,200 percent. 1,200 percent. It really kind of backfired. But you know, the real the real push behind something like this is right now we have an application that ha that isn't read tonight from one of the owners to become FEMA compliant. Okay, and if you're taking a property that's sitting at a 9.6 elevation as the first floor, you're talking about pushing that. That that first floor elevation up to 11 or 13. I'm not sure which, and I mean that's going to have a real impact on neighbors. And if we're going to start considering um, FEMA compliance, well, you know what? I think as landlords, we got to make a, a a long term commitment to our tenancies, mm -hmm. our, our tenants down there, and. You know, the fact of the matter is, you have pro properties where the, where the owners are, are getting on in years, and you say, well, geez, you know, every time somebody sells, it's become millionaire's row. We're selling to some rich guy. Well, it's only a rich person, or somebody that has cash that they can put down, or has another asset in the town of East Hampton that they can leverage to buy these things. And what it does is it completely locks out the local person or even a lot of times a family member right. here because it's not like it's you know if you've got a property that needs some upgrades it needs it needs a renovation well unless that family member has the money to do it out of pocket that option's not there for them okay if we had longer leases i think what it would do is it would give somebody the opportunity to transfer that lease let's say to a member of the family mm -hmm they'd have some real equity in the property that they could borrow against. And, uh, you know, I don't, quite honestly, I don't know why these properties have sat for so long with these year-to-year -year leases. And what stability do people have well, you to don't. even, to you even don't. put money into something to renovate it or well, upgrade the it? Honestly, is the stability year year? is we're is not, I don't know that there's any history of us denying renewing a lease, but you know, it's nowadays, not, nowadays, sea level rise, things like that. Um, I think it's time that we take a serious look at, at, at Lazy Point in the long term and either decide to make a long term commitment to that, to that, um, to that community, or start thinking about not collecting any rents or re much reduced rents. It's one or the other. I don't see how you can do both. Would it be appropriate at this time to ask Chris to uh, look at I, some language? Can I tell you what? I, before we look at no, language, you know what I would really love to yeah. see. George Eldy's here tonight. I did have a conversation with uh, Dave Sealer last week. What I think would be good is to get together with some members sure. of the community. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's a both sides kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own interests here, or their own agendas. And I think okay. we have a meeting and we take some good notes and then we we, we, we try to develop okay. something. Because you know what I don't want to do? I don't want to do what was done in the past here with this board Sunni sort of unilaterally comes up with a set of edicts that we that we read 
to uh, to the community yeah. down there. I think no, I don't want to do that. They either. should be active nope. participants in whatever's going to go on here. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree good. And, and, I have an opinion on it as well, though I don't disagree with uh, any of the opinions here. I kind of do agree. I do think we need to do some level of research into whether or not these financial institutions will lend on these, this length of leases, whether it's 25 or 30 years. I've read some places that maybe they require five years more than the conventional 30. Yeah. So well, I, no, I don't want to make just, all these moves to now when we don't know. Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Joe Smith can't get a loan, then we're doing all this work for No, no, but I think, not. Chris, I think the way these things typically read is you, you've got to have You've got to have the leases have got to basically extend five years beyond what it, what it whatever a typical lease or a typical mortgage. That's what I've read. Might well. be. I guess my point is yeah. we should confirm that. Uh, yeah. A little more well, if you could, if you could well. confirm that, yeah. uh, that'd be great. And, uh, and we have to try to understand if there will be any consequences. Yeah, I wouldn't right. want to trigger a building boom. Right. Yeah. I mean, mm. ah, good no, stuff. nobody expected no, that billionaires the one-year lease would end up um, really right. blocking people out That's from not going the in there and creating the intention them. was. Right. No, we want, want to open it up issue. to local people. I think that would yeah. yep. be a great opportunity. So, hey, George, right. what's, your, what's, your, what's your schedule? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think every, a lot of people are back at Lazy Point good, for the summer, yeah. so it's a good time to get together. I'm glad we're getting to this. Yeah, and maybe we could maybe That's after important. maybe after Memorial Day. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, great. Thank you. Thank Administrative you. payment of oh. the bills. Oh, Francis, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry if if it's sure. not a bother. Not a uh, bother. Just one quick note for the roads committee. Uh, I don't know if, if I can just add this on there. I just wanted to to explain. Um, after having uh, Rod Richardson here uh, speak about the Hicks Island issue, um, he was, I don't know if any of you read the paper in the Star that following week when they did a story on it, but he was um, uh, it did say something in, the Star put him saying something that he didn't say. I, I know you you're familiar with what I'm talking about. Where, Chris, where uh, you wrote that the trustees, he said, are derelict in their duty by allowing the signs which misinform and confuse the public to remain. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes it sound like he's bashing the trustees when in fact he didn't say that. I felt bashed. And I'm reading this, <laughs> I'm reading this from a letter that he sent to David and Chris uh, and Carissa explaining to please make the corrections in the paper. I didn't see if the corrections were made because I don't pick up, I don't get the star anymore, but I would hope that it was corrected um, and that in the future it's checked because I think we need the trustees getting that sort of a, you know, making it sound like a, Well, I don't think we're responsible for what someone may or may not say. If he has, if someone has a disagreement, they can always review the, the video. Right, no, but I mean if, if he was misquoted. But that's not our responsibility. Well, no, it's not no. our responsibility. Okay. I'm, I just want to, I'm, I'm bringing up, because if, if anybody read it and times. thought that that's what he said, <laughs> yeah, that's not what he said. I know what you're saying, yeah. You know, and, and I wanted to make it clear because um, a, an, another quick thing was I think it, it might be uh, eventually, if we can come up with some good wording, if, if you all agree, maybe we can put on the website a reminder to the public that um, that the trustee roads and, and properties are for, in fact, for the public. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, they're welcome to enjoy it. Do we know? Not, not just, not, I'm not referring to Hicks Island. I'm referring to all the wonderful properties that we're slowly beginning to learn more about. And, and I suspect we'll, we're going to learn some more well, things about it. Maybe good if we were able to produce some maps for them to use. Well, I think that's Put ultimately that what, what, right. what we would like to come as a, as a result of all mm -hmm. this once everything is squared away, is to have a nice map to, mm -hmm. that would be a great mm -hmm. idea for the public to mm -hmm. be able to come in the office and grab a, 
a brochure that had a quick map a on it. Yeah, and you don't want to accidentally send them on some private property. Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. The Chamber of Commerce should have those too, you know, people come to town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. I just wanted to mention, I thought it was important in case, okay. you know, somebody read it and wasn't clear. Mm -hmm. um, he did, he is asking. You know, for for the for the for the support of the trustees, yeah. he's not looking to say that yeah, we're still, derelict. Still, still would like to duties. get together with him. I haven't had a chance to, yes, to reach yeah. out, but yeah. we should go over there and, and talk to him. Yeah. Francis, can I bring up one more thing before sure. we get there? I'm sorry. Uh, a member of the public uh, did send me information on a bill pertaining to a large-scale purseining of Menhaden or or moss bunker, a important food fish resource. And uh, if these large, you know, persanes go out and catch large quantities of this particular species of fish, it has impacts on inshore baymen, on recreational fishing interests, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to distribute this email that I have to everyone. I'd like you to take a look at it, and we might want to send a letter of support or not uh, on this matter. But a member of the public did ask me to bring it to everyone's attention. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know that I've received it and I'll send it around okay. to everyone to take Good. a look at it. Thank you. It's a bill before the Assembly of New York State. All right. Okay. Anything else? Uh -huh. um, I understand Rob's point completely. Uh, I was not quoting him. That was not a quote where he would uh, barely fit anything. Um, I was paraphrasing what I understood his point to be, and I may have gotten that wrong. I, I think to his point, and it was on a private online. Oh. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> yeah, All right. I'm going to run. Good night. I got to go out. Good to see you. you. Okay, if we pay the bills. Straight home. I want to make a motion to pay the bills. <laughs> I have a question about that. Yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to know what's the $3,500 for the Montour pump out boat. Uh, what were the repairs to that? Which one was that? That was uh, Hampton Marina? It doesn't say. Yeah, you yeah. Hampton Marina. What was the engine? Um, yeah. Oh, was that the gas tank? There was a whole. Yeah, we had to replace a gas tank. The full invoice is there if you want to review it now. Yeah, I don't want to hold jobs. up the works, I just wonder. <laughs> they rip the deck up usually again. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah, it yeah, it's a real job. It took How old is our pump out I'm boat? trying to find that we have two. On. Sorry. Two pump out boats? And then we just are purchasing another one? There it is. Here we go. Yeah. We we balance forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. uh, What's this one? It's right it's fuel tank. It's about hundred thousand dollars for a pump. Yes, it is the fuel tank. Okay. Uh, like the, but look at I what believe you. Oh, no, oh, no. Yeah, it, 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 it went last year. The, it developed a leak, and they ended up putting an external tank on the deck to get through the season. And then after they put the boats away, they sent it off. Do we get a proposal for something like that usually about magnitude? Uh, I mean, in the future, it might be say. nice to just get an estimate. You know, or uh, yeah, I don't know how it went there. We usually, we usually leave it up to, in the past, we've left it up to, and I know we have agreements with um, a lot of, several of the marinas around. Right. And it may be dependent on the type of job. Right. I'm just in the future, if it's something that's of this magnitude, it would be mm -hmm. nice, I think, how too. How much money are we talking about? Who, uh, uh, who puts that's this stuff out to work? Who, who makes this decision? We're going to bring it to this guys. marina to get fixed. The pump out guys. So well, would they be the ones that we would be asked to get three estimates or something like that? I if think we, we could do it ourselves. We can do it. I just think we should get an estimate for something of this magnitude before just having it done and then getting the bill. Like you said, just getting the bill. Like everything else, it's yeah. The first we've, I've right. seen of this right now is a bill for $3,500, which is a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I do think we'll, <coughs> we may end up getting reimbursed through the, our annual grant on that also. Nice. Well, that's good. Yeah. Where does the annual grant come from? Uh, is it clean water? It, it's, it's government a program. Program. Government in vessel assistance. We received our first paperwork from them. But the boats were purchased through the grant program, and then they uh, also helped pay maintenance. For the maintenance. And, and That's good. Yeah. 
Who's eating all the clams and oysters and shrimp from Stuart Seafood? I didn't get to try. We had the the um, Sportsman yeah. Alliance. You didn't come. That's where I learned. To, that's where I learned to <laughs> open the the first time. <laughs> All right, Stuart <laughs> Seafood, one ninety-seven fifty. With Joe, Joe Blocker. Okay, uh, Marine Boat Builders, um, four hundred and eighty-one dollars. Parts for a pump-out boat. Tailor made for golf clubs. I mean, what? <laughs> a, a cover for pump-out boat, five hundred sixty-nine ninety-nine. Uh, Anthony Towhill, nine hundred eighteen dollars seventy-five cents to review the uh, deep, water deep water thing. Um, North Fork Water Supply, $72.47. East Hampton Star, $3.56. Optimum, $165.62. East Hampton Marina, $3,533.09. I just have one more quick question. Sure. Is it Tony Towhill bill for the review he did that we saw, or is this for the more complete review? Because I know he was. This was the most recent. Um, that we received today. Yes, yes. We received. It had a few extra little things in it. It, it, it for, the the, the um, benefits for package. Um, the lease thing. The lease thing. Yeah, and, and basically he just reviewed it and said that the the um, contract is shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> This is late night trusting. And and and, part, and also the uh, no, there wasn't. Okay, that yes. Yeah. So that's what it was. It was it was a review of the uh, that stuff. Yes, he did. I'll make a motion to pay the bills. I'll second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, minutes, April twenty third. I I wrote into. Yeah. Okay. They were fine the way they were. I didn't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make a motion. I'll second. 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 <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. Okay, and uh, minutes of the special meeting? They look good as well. I make yeah, a motion. Yeah. We accept oh, that. Was, that. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, financial reports for the end of the month, April 30th. I don't not understand that. I've not looked at them. Okay, so I haven't seen them. We'll table those. Table those. Yep. I looked them over. We're going to have a special meeting yeah. to go, how to go over the financial. I, them yeah. over yeah. some I just look and I go. Okay. Ryan's good at it. Okay. Ryan's the lead. He's our CFO. Okay. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. Everybody. Everything else that's going on, I really don't CFO have anything under report of the clerk. <laughs> And correspondence, an invitation. Oh, I'm to sorry. Did anyone make a motion to accept the financials? No. We'll Not yet. We're, we're just makes a lot we're of tabling. Paper. I, I recopy them and we kill those no. trees. We table them. We table them. We'll keep. We'll keep our copies. Yeah, okay, don't make any. Keep more your copies, copies please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, correspondence, an invitation to the 2018 Suffolk County Harmful Algal Bloom Action Plan Technical Session on May 16th. Uh, just, uh, that's Wednesday, is it? Wednesday? Yeah, just just Tomorrow. for your information, there's a public session in the morning, which will be probably more understandable if anybody wants to attend. Mm -hmm. Morning. Yeah. And this is at the Timber Point Country Club, Great River Road. Oh, that's right. It's Wednesday. We can't go. Okay. We can't go. to the city. Uh, a letter from Fred Thiel thanking the trustees for the letter of support. That's the one that you put together, yes. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, which I have a copy of it here. Uh, notice of DEC shellfish closures, which I believe are available on the town website. Is that the seasonal closures? I believe so. Did I, I send that to I you? I think there's some Are additional. They? Well, maybe. I found it at NOAA. An area around area. Alewife Creek. I'm not sure if that's been closed in the past. Who's sitting there? An Outside. Outside. Really? Outside. I know. I saw oh, it as well. Okay. I don't know. I know they have one of those around the little uh, Barnes Meadow uh, yeah. creek mouth. Right. I, I didn't see one picking. on Elwood previously. Oh, I think it's garbage the picking. Napi oh. Bay by Devon Yacht Club. What's this? I knew it just oh, this, yeah. this is that. Devon Yacht Club. That's the permanent, right? The one in the yeah. west in the basin. Devin. Devin. Just, yeah. That was the permanent. 
And they make mention there of two stakes being in the ground in Northwest, defining right. open from the close. And I think the language there says, if the stakes are missing or one of them is missing, the whole harbor's closed, so. Okay. Yeah, I've seen those before, they're, they're, sure orange. Those, they're orange. They're orange right? stakes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar with them. And I do see the area, there's a sphere around uh, Mount this this yeah, should be new. posted on our website. Is it possible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Still in detention. Yeah, we, we should, have an electronic we should, we copy. Should do that on we can scan it and put it up. Well, it came to us electronically. So. Okay. Great. We got this, and we have the lease information. Okay. That's on the proposed lease website too. So. <laughs> yeah, but we should we should have. Well, I could link to it. Yeah, I could link to it. Yeah, I could link to it. That oh, link yeah, it yeah. Or, yeah, links might be more appropriate than mm -hmm. PDFs in some instances. Uh, Conic Estuary Program, upcoming events. Um, I don't know if anybody want to hear what's going on? Sure. Horseshoe Crab Monitoring Sunday, May 13th. I think you guys did this. It's only 10 again. Yes. Yeah. Don't so. wait for us. <laughs> the invitation's right. 10 Okay, so there's a bunch of events here. And a copy of a letter from Cy Kinsella yeah, awesome. to Jerry Grabowski. I'm shot. Uh, regarding deep water wind. Anybody have anything else they want to discuss? No, sir. So a motion to close. Motion to second. Battery. <laughs> oh my God. Motion like, to close. You remind me of toys. Second. second. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh my God.